Hello, everyone. Welcome to my CCI Enterprise course. In this course, you will learn all the technology related to uh, your CCI Enterprise journey. And in case if you are looking for the actual lab type of uh, scenario and the solution, then you can reach out. You can send me email, Ratnes721, Kumar721. That is here. And then I will send you that detail info that how my students they are preparing for their actual lab actual lab training it will be almost uh, similar that what you will expect in the exam you can practice i will help you i will guide you for one month to clear this exam i will help you a step by step how to reduce drill down the um, the solution drill down the technology into a small pieces and i will help you to uh, pass your exam in the in first attempt so go for this course. This will be a good place where you can learn the technology. But if you are serious about the CCI lab exam, then you can drop me an email and you can get the detailed info. All right, so let me stop this video. And if you watch this video, you can uh, simply contact me and you can get the information related to the new update that we have in the CCI Enterprise Lab. Hi there, thanks for your enrollment. We are in one minute ad break. In this break, I'm going to show you that I have so many courses uploaded over Udemy. And if you're going to enroll my courses, you will get 95% discount. Every month, three times first week, mid of the month, and the last week of the month. I am sharing the coupons. If you go and use those coupons, then my courses related to CCNP, related to CCI, all those courses, you are going to get heavy discount, up to 95%. You can see the prices are a little bit higher here, but if you go and apply the coupon, the prices will go rock bottom. So go use those coupons. Suppose if you don't have those coupons, then you can always ping me over YouTube. You can send me email. You can ask for those coupons. I will provide you that coupon. So get the coupon, get the discount. Some of my courses over Udemy, they are bestseller. Some of the courses are quite new, like Stvan Automation, DNA Automation, CCI Data Center 3.0. Those are the new uploads as well. So please go, continue your learning, take the coupon, enroll my courses, and study well. All the best. Thanks for joining. Today our topic is quality of service. And I'll assure you that today's session and upcoming session, if you do not know anything related to QS, you will understand 100% about QS. Uh, we'll see the slide slide deck and everything. The slide deck I have taken, obviously, these are from Cisco, maybe from Cisco Live, maybe from different resources from Cisco Training and all. That's why these slides are very good that I'm going to present. And in these slides, these slides are itself uh, uh, built in a way that you will understand QS, the requirement of QS, why to apply. Now, there are some concepts which may which which you think that it is complicated or difficult but what we'll do we can slow down our pace we'll try to understand and once you tell that okay i understand this then we'll move so let's just start qs the first question related to qs that why we need quality of service that's the question number one why there is requirement related to qs and now here you can see that uh, we are applying quality of service for these purposes. So what is the purpose? Manage packet loss. It's not only that we are managing the packet loss, but if you have some uh, dedicated services and you want to deliver those services, such as uh, rich media applications, such as real-time applications, so Obviously, if there is any congestion in the uh, in the service delivery, 
packet will start getting loss and you don't want that. So you will try to do some arrangement. You will try to do or you will try to use some of the uh, QS tools to make sure that packets are delivering. We have less packet loss or if you have packet loss, you have some other arrangement to resend them. Uh, you will utilize the whatever bandwidth you have in between endpoints. We'll see that we can go and apply the QS in two places uh, over the LAN link, over the WAN link. So how we are applying everything you'll come to know. So here you can see the primary goal of quality of service. Clearly you can see as the primary goal is to manage the packet loss. And then the secondary role or goal of QS is that they you can go and classify the packets is to condition traffic at the access edge. So you can go and use the trust policy. We'll see what does it mean by trust. You can go and do the classification and marking. You can go and do the policing. Right. So the QS two goals. First goal is to manage the packet loss. And second thing is to do the classification and marking that conditioning the traffic to the access edge. Access edge means obviously it will be your LAN part. And this part that you are seeing the goal number one, it will be mostly it is related to WAN because where you have packet loss. So suppose you have one branch, you have other branch. And in between these branches, if you have ISP, suppose cloud is there and then you may have your access switch where you have your LAN network. So when you see the arrangement, we see the network. So from one branch to other branch, your network is moving. So you have your network from one branch to other branch. And then um, where you can apply, you can go and apply the QS on the WAN link. You can go and apply QS to this link also. Even you can go and apply the QS to this incoming interface as well. But it will be your trust boundary. We'll see that. How we can go and create the trust boundary. But uh, yeah, one leg is going towards the LAN. And one is going towards the WAN. Now, this is one of the diagram. It's not exactly, actually, actually you know, it's not the exact diagram that we have in the enterprise. Maybe. You have other routers as well before reaching to LAN. So you will pick that on which particular interface you will go and apply the QS. In the LAN network, we know that generally we are applying QS to the distribution switches. Okay. We'll see that. So here you can see the diagram. I told you earlier that there are so many nice diagrams here taken from Cisco. And in these diagrams, what do you understand from this diagram? This is simple, very easy diagram. What's the problem in these diagrams? There's one, one I think one point of failure. Point of failure, yeah. And why we have failure? Because you will see that you have fast sender and then you have slow receiver or maybe you have the issue related to bandwidth so suppose if this is okay so if this is you can see in the diagram this is 10 gig link link but this is my 10 gig link right and these this is also and this is suppose this is one gig for example but you can see one gig into 11 that means 11 gig. So sending is speed is 11 gig here from because it is the aggregation from all the different interfaces and then receiving end. So in this end, you can see that your maximum uh, throughput is 10 gig. That means you have one gig loss if all the system will send with one gig speed. Or maybe if you have 100 of uh, a uh, laptop in the access edge and 100 laptop means uh, your requirement means you can send 100 gig of uh, traffic but here you have only 10 gig so that's called uh, 
what you can say uh, fast sender slow receiver type of uh, uh, issue here now this is related to laptop one laptop very very easy a straightforward diagram but you can see the other diagram here in the other diagram it is showing here that you have the access switch connected with the distribution switch so you have your access switches and then you have one distribution switch here you can see the point of failure because obviously why these things are happening the simple reason behind this is this that you are sending the traffic uh, in a higher speed that one link in between the network is some something which is slow link or which which has less bandwidth so there your packet may get, start getting dropped and again this is very simple diagram in the network you will see that you have cluster of chain of switches so what is your point of failure you don't know what is happening in the poorly designed network that people are connecting cisco switches and in between they are putting some other switches as well uh, what they want to do they simply want to extend the network and in that case they are putting the unmanaged switch in between the network and that unmanaged switch will become the black hole for the entire uh, network so whatever connected with that particular system right so those things are there that we have to go and find out how it is working and uh, where is the problem now um, i told you earlier in the previous session that uh, qs is something very much hardware specific so qs actually has two part one is uh, software qs and one is hardware qs a hardware qs and one is software now obviously in software qs you can go and use different type of tricks and techniques but in hardware qs this is something like your you can understand very easily so if i go and draw one router here so in this router there are two things a packet is coming right and then packet is leaving so when packet is leaving to this particular router obviously over this particular interface this this will go and use the line rate or the interface rate of that particular router and you can mark this interface as a egress interface outgoing interface right and when the packet is coming hitting here to this router then it will go to the internal cycling or router process can go and use that particular packet so you can go and apply the software queue so when packet is coming ingress incoming packet incoming packets you can go and use software qs right and in the outgoing here you can go and use the hardware qs so this thing should be very much clear that incoming packet and outgoing packet according to that we can go and use different different type of techniques so you can see that different hardware having different uh, qs software versus hardware qs what is the uh, global default setting we'll understand this what is the trust um, boundaries we'll see that trust boundary as well logical but versus physical interface means where you are applying the qs uh, mostly you will see that we are applying to the physical interfaces but if you have dm vpn technique like you have one hub and you have multiple spokes in that case you will go and apply that to the tunnel interface tunnel interface is nothing but your logical interface then what is the mechanism that cisco is using cisco is using network based application recognition protocol nbar and nbar can go and recognize 1400 plus applications mm -hmm. now this nbar uh, is actually you know it's like a revolution in the networking uh, uh, domain why it is i will i will explain you about this 
and then you can go and apply to the ingress and egress queuing. So before moving anywhere further, I just want to explain you about NBAR, Network-Based Application Recognition Protocol. And you will see that Cisco is telling that they have NBAR too. Now just for NBAR, if you have time and if you go and search Cisco Live documents and all or any online document, you'll see that just to understand NBAR, you may have 50 to 60 slides behind the scene in the hardware in the ASIC level how this n bar is working how they are uh, uh, how they are identifying the applications and then <clears throat> once you identify the application then you can obviously apply the policy now i told you this n bar is very important because n bar can understand application metadata now, why this application metadata is important? Because when we are telling that it can go and understand 1400 plus application, what does it mean? 1400 different application means it can understand FTP, it can understand uh, HTTP type of traffic, uh, TCP based originated traffic and line is big. Now, if someone has to understand different different type of uh, applications or protocols, that means that protocol should capable enough to understand the nature, right? Nature of that protocol. And that's why their nature is like, they are not reading everything in the TCP or HTTP or FTP, but some part of that, some important part of that. So they will recognize the application. Now to recognize the application, you know, to recognize the application, obviously router or switches, their CPU cycle will increase. Now, suppose if you are sending 1400 different applications and someone has to understand how they will understand because they have their processing cycle, they have their CPU cycle. From there, they will understand the metadata of that application and they can recognize the application. Now, once the system will recognize the application, then next phase, you can go and apply all new, new things. So if you go and study Cisco SD-WAN, you'll see that the ISR routers that we are going to use for SD-WAN devices, they can go and use this NBAR and once they can use NBAR, they can go and recognize the application. Once they recognize the application, then you can go and create new type of things. New type of things is you can go and create application aware routing. Not only application aware routing, but you can go and use application aware firewalling. techniques okay in our case that in our dna dna or dnac all the switches basically new switches like 9300 or 9000 series switches catalyst 9000 series switches they can where you can go and enable this nbar once you enable this nbar there also they can go and understand the application so application aware recognition they can do and once they do application aware recognition they can plot different type of charts like in this case you will know that which particular user is using for example facebook or youtube how much bandwidth they bandwidth they have downloaded or uploaded all those application you will the dnac will go and provide the report related to that. It means they will go and plot different type of nice visible charts. Okay. And that's one, one of the revolution we have actually in the networking domain so that your system, your switches, your routers, your firewalls, they can go and identify the application because if they do not identify the application, how they will apply the policy. Right. And this application awareness is actually, it's it's like old technique. It was there in the checkpoint firewall, parallel to firewall, now FTDs, 
all these firewalls, you think like this, if they do not understand the application, how you will apply the policy? So they have this mechanism to understand the application with their metadata, right? So that is one of the very important aspect. So what we have done so far that uh, we have discussed that the need or goal of QS, two goals are there. You can go and apply to the LAN interface and WAN interface that we have discussed, point number one. Then what we have discussed in point number oops, two, that uh, you have software versus hardware QS and the directions. You can go and apply the QS to the ingress and egress. Then third thing we are discussing about N bar. Okay, so knowing these very small, small things, let's move on and see what we have, even the requirement and all, what we have here in the slide. Now, because this is easy to start, the trust, uh, trust boundary concept and such type of concept you have in our lab as well. So the big lab we have, right? The CCI big lab. In that you will understand we have the security features as well like DHCP snooping. And once you apply DHCP snooping, then where you will go and apply these policies. So those things will come later on. Now in this diagram, first of all, try to understand that where you are going and fixing your trust boundary. What is your perimeter? So very easy from the diagram, you can understand that some places we can go and make our switches. So you can see that on top, that switch is connected with the switch is connected with printer, switch is connected with laptop. So you can go and define the trust boundary. You can see no MLS, QS trust, untrust means you can go and define the trust boundary for the, at the switch level. Then you can see that even we can go and extend that trust boundary and uh, apply the trust boundary to the PC level or maybe any other uh, virtual conferencing type of device is there or maybe any switch is there, we can go and apply there. We can go and apply the trust boundary to the VC conferencing devices or maybe uh, telephony devices. So you can see that we have the trust devices. If you go and type the question mark here in this Cisco switches, MLSQS trust device question mark, you will get option related to uh, you want to define the boundary to the Cisco phone, CTS, IP camera, or media player. So here you can see in the um, configuration, these are the configuration step, MLS QS trust DSCP. Now what is DSCP? What is cost? We'll discuss. Today only we'll discuss. <clears throat> you can see that if you go and apply the marking, see classification and marking. So if you go and apply the classification and mark, basically they are related to marking. So if you go and apply the marking at the layer three, then you have to go and use DSCP, differentiated service code point. If you go and apply the marking to layer two, you have to go and use the cost class of service, right? So you will understand we have very nice slides explaining that what is cost, what is DSCP. Marking are accepted or rejected. You can apply the marking and then you can accept or reject. A very easy concept. The important thing we have to understand about the cost and DSCP, we'll understand this. So now in the next slide, you can see the trust boundary and the marking. And now this table, you can see here, so a little bit difficult to understand. So what we'll do, first of all, we'll go and understand about costs and DSCP, and then we'll come back to this slide. So you can see I took uh, taken this slide somewhere from the internet, and I have put here in this slide, 
in this PPT. Now you will see, now you will understand this cause and DSCP. So if you go and check IPv4 header, if you go and check IPv4 header format, Okay, identification, offset, protocol, header, uh, where it is, ECN, DSCP, yeah. uh, still it is not what except, uh, yeah. okay, two formats I will show you. First, see this. This is IPv4 header format. Now, here you will see somewhere type of service, TOS, right? You can see on top, I think four byte of uh, uh, this. Uh, so, version is maybe two and then four and four plus 16, like that. Maybe. Okay. So, you can see this type of service field here. Now, let me go and show you this in little bit. Extended format, this TOS is further divided into you can see this uh dscp and ecn explicit explicit congestion notification ecn dscp and ecn now it is a starting from bit number 8 going to 16 that means they are 8 bit field right maybe two bytes 8 bit field from 8 to 16 now you can see that it is part of IPv4 header format, right? Now let's go back and let's see this. So the type of service that we are talking here, the type of service that is TOS, that is part of IPv4 format. Now you will see that TOS actually having so you have TOS type of service. It may be you can go and define it at layer two. So if you go and define to layer two, it will become the COS class of service. And if you want to define at layer three, it will become DSCP. Differentiated service code point. You can see the differentiated service code point. Right, you can see here COS DSCP. TOS is type of service, a part of uh, header. Then rest of the things are very interesting. And finally, in bottom, you can see ECN. This is three, three bit field. So this three bit ECN field, and here also you can see this ECN. This is three bit explicit, explicit, explicit congestion notification. What does it mean? Well, we'll see that. But before ECN, let's go and understand these terms here. So you can see that AF, IP precedence, CS, DP. These are the terms that will be used within the quality of service. If you are studying quality of service, these terms will come. Okay, so first of all, you separate the service like you have layer two service, you have layer three service, and then according to that further, you can go and study. Now, this cost, there may be chance that uh, the device do not understand DSCP, layer 3 services or layer 3 QS. Then you will go and apply the cost class of service. Now, now when we are talking about cost, you will see <coughs> that uh, this here, this is actually a very nice diagram. So, <coughs> you can see first of all, toss. And then you can see DSCP and then you can see cost. Cost is equal to IP precedence. Now in for cost, you can see clearly that we have bit one, two, and three. Actually, three bits are there. And those bits are six, seven, eight. So total how many bits are reserved? So for DSCP, you can see the bits they are reserved. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. Two bits are there for ECN. Okay. So if we have combination for two bit two bit means it may be zero zero 
zero one one zero one one right if you have combination for ecn so bits will be like this so zero one two and three now what it is telling first and second bit so if you see this big chart here in this big chart you will see that we have all the 8 bit 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and when you are reading this chart first and second bit is always 0 that you, why it is 0 means in this chart it is 0 but it should be maybe it is 0 0 0 1 1 1 etc we will we'll discuss about that now in this chart you will see that uh, the priority if you understand this particular term that i'm going to use here you will understand most of the thing so you will see this application oops you see here this application box let me go and change the color this application box here okay now you'll see the when you are creating the qs you are dividing you you, you have to go and classify the applications once you classify the applications then in segmentation of applications so in your organization maybe some of the applications they are high priority traffic some of the applications they are uh, low priority traffic that that's the reason you can see here the classification so you have best effort a scavenger, bulk data, network management, transaction data, call signaling, mission critical, interactive video, voice and routing. Some of the control traffic, control plane traffic that will that will be very critical because if you're routing, suppose OSPF control packets will drop. OSPF will not form. If your STP, a spanning tree control packet will get dropped, they will um, the STP will break. Right. So there are some control traffic as well. We should give high priority to them. Now, you can see in all the classes, like it's a low priority traffic or maybe high priority traffic or maybe mission critical traffic. So further, you can divide in three part. Low priority, mid priority and high priority traffic. Now here you will see clearly that in this part also you have low medium high low medium high low medium high low medium high right what does it mean again i will explain you Don't worry about that we are going to learn everything now <clears throat> in this diagram you will see that cost right cost where it is it will be your sixth bit seventh bit and eighth bit where you have six seven eight this particular highlighted diagram so when you have three bits right and with that three bit if you have to go and create the arrangement how you will do zero 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 right with three how many combination will come three into three i think nine right One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I have missed something. So zero is done. A zero then it should be one hundred. Oh, I missed this thing. One uh, one zero. Right? Like that means it should be not here you can see in, in the this diagram you can see. Let me go and erase this. You can see, see, zero, zero, oops. This is okay. So you can see zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one. I don't know why they have given zero, zero, one three times, but this is one arrangement because low, mid, and uh, we'll, we'll discuss. But again, you can see zero, zero, one. You can see then this. So, here, how many combinations are there? One, two, three, because you can see colors as well. Different, different colors are there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can make uh, nine, right? A simple mathematics, right? 
if you have three bits, how many combinations you can get? Can you help me to get this? Then zero, one zero, right? Yeah, then zero, one, one. Zero, one, one. 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 Right, then, then um, uh, one zero zero. One zero zero. And one right. zero one. And then uh one one zero and then one one one. So how many this is yeah. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Eight only. Yeah. I think we can create only eight combinations. That's why I can see here in this chart. If you see this chart, you have eight different combinations. So zero zero zero, zero zero one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. You can create eight combination. Okay. Now, if you go and this see this diagram, this you know you will find little bit uh, difficult because what uh, they have they try to do that they they want to explain everything in one diagram that is good also. So you can compare different different services at one place. So this particular highlighted portion that you are seeing here this portion, right, that you are seeing here, this is cos, class of service or IP precedence, right. Then for DSCP, how many bits you have left? So for DSCP, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 bits. Actually, technically, you have 5 plus 3. Right? So, for DSCP, you have 8 bits. With 8 bits, how many combination you can create, you know? 64, I think. 64 combinations you can, I think, go and create for DSCP. But what Cisco and other vendors they have done, uh, they haven't uh, created 64 combination. You can see in the bottom DSCP, maximum it is going to 56, right? So they are starting with zero and then eight and then 10, 12, 15. It's actually very interesting. This chart is very interesting. Now we can understand this little bit, right? So before I go to DSCP, are you able to understand this IP present this particular section? Exactly. This is layer two. If you are doing layer two marking, you have to do cos or IP precedence. This is for layer two marking, right? Then you have layer three marking and some places you will see sometimes you have to go and map the layer two marking with the layer three marking as well. Now these markings, if if we do not think this marking as a marking, but if you go and think this marking as a tool that we can go and segregate our traffic and then apply the marking. So you can see that here in this, how many segregations are there? Best effort. And then you can see the color. This is actually very interesting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Eight different color you can see here in this spectrum. And this is actually Cisco best practice. So when you are also creating your QoS uh, policies, then you should know this as a base reference, this chart. And according to this chart, you can go and put the applications inside the best effort. So you created one class, best effort. Inside that best effort, you can go and put Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, you know, all those social media and other gaming profiles and all. Those are best effort. Means you are not going to give any priority for best effort traffic. If they are delivered, delivered, otherwise no one cares. You got the point for the best effort. Likewise, scavenger and the bulk data. They 
why why we have such arrangement because we don't want any type of priority guarantee for these traffic if they are dropped it's okay for the business right so now if you have to go and apply only layer 2 qs so then you can go and use this arrangement and for best effort you can see that you can go and simply use 000 that means nothing but zero so for best effort the cost marking is zero for a scavenger and bulk traffic and like that in that spectrum the cost marking is one so if you are putting marking zero or one you can understand why we are have, having this arrangement right any doubt in this you are able to understand uh yes so so my question is how do we then configure this do we have a configuration we'll example configuration. So we'll, yes uh when today tomorrow today i, I mean, think it's class? not possible we have full fledged lab as well but later on but configuration example here we have in this slides so we're going to uh, practice the configuration or we're just going to look because i, I, I we haven't just started to... the lab lab will start once the lab will start 100 percent we have configuration for these things this yeah, configuration yes, because... that you're seeing that yeah. we have actually this configuration in our uh, SD1 session and once I'll start the lab I'll configure this configuration is actually very easy it's okay. very very easy to configure this because once you understand this concept this is the configuration so I told you that you can go and create the class inside that class you can go and match the group like VoIP or Facebook or YouTube and all those things and according to that class you can go and apply the policy you'll understand I'll come to that I'll not go ahead of time but you will understand everything now if I put and see here what is the um, class voice and what cost we are putting five right this cost now if I simply go and give this command okay match QS5 what you will understand now but if you go and check this chart you will see that five we are using for was right in the cost so now you will understand that in the CLI why with the class this is class why with the class voice we are using five right now you will understand this configuration. simply if I go and give you the configuration these configurations are very easy never you know never worry about this configuration and all signaling why we are giving three and this is related to cost but if you go and use DSCP so in DSCP for voice we are giving EF I think this is explicit forwarding uh, EF. So for wires, cost is what? Five. For wires, IP precision means layer three marking is EF. Why? So again, if you go back to the chart, you will see here that the DSCP. So the first portion is in this diagram is the cost. And then this part is nothing but actually both, if you combine both cost and this part actually this will become DSCP DSCP is from here to here right because this part is ECN and it is always zero always zero means no congestion again I'll explain you ECN it is a little bit different I will explain you in the QA section is itself but you can see that this particular portion this portion and this portion so how many bits three plus three six bits right so two to the power six how many combinations you can understand i think 64 two to the power six how much this is you can say oh 32 so 32 combination you will get related to dscp but 
three of the bits you can see they have the similarity and how you are mapping this uh, three bit to eight bit that is one other story so layer two marking can be combined with layer three marking and that's why you'll see there in the configuration while before we uh, wipe the dscp marking is ef ef is the highest marking we don't have anything above ef related to traffic and then these two uh, rows that you are seeing here they are related to control and signals they are mandatory you have to give queue for your ospf control packet for your stp control packet for your eigrp control packet this is for networking this is mandatory you have to give the cs6 and cs7 for very high high traffic high priority traffic otherwise network will break suppose if you do not allow ospf control packets to flow how ospf will work they, they will never form right so don't worry we have configuration i know that you are waiting for you know something to do cli configuration and all and i am telling okay wait 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 this wait time will get over don't worry then we have only configuration and lab okay so so far it's okay Are able to understand? Uh, getting it gradually though. Yeah. Okay. So no problem because see, um, uh, I haven't covered this. So today, what I have done, I have covered one, two, three. I haven't gone through this. Four, and we are in the fifth slide. And you know, one hour is almost over means we are approaching that's why if you understand this concept it will help you always to understand qs understanding this q uh, qs this marking is actually very important because this is very much like mathematical what we are doing here you know we are understanding the maths the mathematics that's why you're feeling this now, once you understand this IP precedence or cause that is nicely highlighted in this section, then if you want to add the layer three marking as well, what you need to understand, you need to understand these both together. From bit number three to bit number eight, you have to understand, right? Now, because we understand very much, we understood the flow. So now you will see that uh, you have your best effort, your scavenger, build traffic, and your other fields are here. Why it is there? Because not only we want to mark this zero and one. So these zeros and ones related to what? Cause bit. If you go and put this in the uh, in the DSCP, so DSCP bit will be zero, eight. 10, 12, why and 14? Why this is 0, 8, 10, 12? Because very simple, if you go and add these bits, so let me go and highlight this. For example, if you go here in this, and if you calculate this, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So 0, 1, 1, clearly it is telling that you have to go and add 4 plus 8, plus, sorry, uh, 1 plus 2, plus four plus eight, like that so zero so you will not add because this is zero so one 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 so that means two plus eight plus four plus eight how much how much this is eight plus four twelve plus two fourteen that's why you will see fourteen here now for example i'll go and randomly choose anything so for example if i go and pick this what will be the dscp value if we have such type of bit arrangement so one, two, three, four. That means one, two, three, four. 16 plus eight, how much? 24 plus four, 28 plus two, 30. So if you see the DSCP here, this is 30, right? Like that, if you go and add this EF, this bit here, it will come 46. You have to go and 
add like this. So it's, it's not like that you have to go and add always and you have to understand this, that's it. If you understand, you don't need to go and do all these maths always. You have to understand this once and you will use always. Now, one very important thing here is this. It's very important. That's the last thing to understand in this puzzle is this part. Drop preference. This DP is drop preference. So you think like this. Um, and this is not a good example. But again, I am giving this example. Suppose you have three ambulance, for example. Three ambulance are there, right? And you have to pass three ambulance at a time. And you have this option means... Uh, you can't allow three in the same time. You have to go and give ambulance one, ambulance two, ambulance three, one by one. Okay. So you have ambulance one, ambulance two, and ambulance three. But problem here is this, that you have to pass them and one by one they can go. So because since they are ambulance, right? They are same class, right? But still, how we will go and give the priority? So, suppose in one of the ambulance, we have the president. It's, it's a bad example, but it's still. Uh, so, I will not give president. Say, the ambulance is there, but maybe very critical situation. Somehow, we come to know that the patient in that ambulance having very critical situation is a little bit less critical. And the other ambulance has low severity or it is less critical than all, right? So that means that you will go and allow this one first and this one second and this one third, right? But there is still part of ambulance community. They are ambulance. That's why you will see that although you have same class, but is still with a DSCP, you can further divide the traffic. Because in DSCP, you have more bits, right? You have six bits to further subdivide the traffic. So even they are same class, still you can go and define the low, medium and high within same class. And that's why we have this AF. AF is nothing but assured forwarding. AF, assured forwarding 11, 12, 13. So that means if AF 1, 1 is there, 1, 2 is there, and 1, 3 is there, that means 1, 1 is low. So as per the low, it's mid. Oops. And it's high. Likewise, you will see that you have AF in 2 as well. You have AF in 3 as well. And you have AF in 4. That means further you have 4 different classes as per the cost. And below you go in this chain, they will become more and more critical. Right? This is like this. Further you go, means 11, 12, 13. So they will become critical. So you have actually this principle in QS. Top to bottom and left to right. In the same class, the left to right will become critical. And in different classes, top to bottom traffic will become critical. Okay, so knowing this much knowledge, I will not further go and continue the class. Your task is this, that simply go and check this first 10 slides. That's it. Try to understand from your perspective and ask question in the next session. Thanks for joining and uh, what we have done yesterday in previous session that uh, we have discussed about uh, TOS type of service and in TOS we have basically two parts 
one part is CUS that is labeled to classification and marking. And then other part is, uh, um, so TUS, what parts we have? One is TUS, COS, right? Class of service. And other part is IP DSCP, um, DSCP like that is layer three marking. And one was uh, layer two marking. Like that, we have discussed these things earlier. And uh, when you are studying this, it's very important to know that uh, your CUS having these three bits reserved, sixth, seventh, and eighth. So because if you have three bits, so maybe your total number of uh, markings will be two to the power three, that means eight. Right, like that. You can see here how many markings we have. So for uh, CUS, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven markings are reserved. If you start from zero to seven, that means eight. Right, and then the label three marking that you have six bit reserve. Uh, somehow this six bit means two to the power six. That means how much? maybe 64, right, two to the power six. So that you can see here that uh, that DSCP marking, we are mapping with the cos. So TOS, uh, the DSCP, we are mapping with the cos. And uh, you will see that in the cos, also you have low priority, high priority, and medium priority, like low, medium, and high priority, right? So this is something that you need to understand, right? If you understand this marking and this thing, it's become easy. And if you understood this particular chart, this chart is actually very, very important uh, cheat sheet type of, uh, summary type of chart related to uh, QS. Finally, you can see that we have ECN as well, two bits reserved for ECN. And we should have some slide related to ECN so we can discuss. Otherwise, I'll explain you about this. Okay. So now this is something that you can see that, okay. So now you're showing me the full chart. Like in chemistry, we have some chart related to different uh, elements like helium, lithium, and others. Like that, you have this chart. So now we have this full chart. And then this particular chart, um, how we can utilize in the device. Okay. So let's try to understand that. This is best practices uh, points. And uh, it's very interesting. Some Sometimes things are mixing and they are connected. So always perform QS in hardware. Try to perform hardware QS first, then the software. Classif classify and mark the application close to their source as technically uh, and administratively feasible. See, you know, nowadays this close to source, close to their sources, this particular section. Actually, nowadays we are trying to do the routing as well close to the source. So close to source is uh, one thing that other technologies also we try to implement close to source, not only QS, but other things also we are trying to do close to source. Then police unwanted traffic enable queuing, right? So we should understand this queuing as well that uh, what is queuing and different different hardwares they have different different queuing mechanism today we will go and discuss one one queue technology now this is one small diagram and this is very important because um, you will understand everything in this and it is telling you that okay i have trusted port and i have untrusted port and I have conditional trusted ports where you can ports where you can go and create some 
policies rule for conditional trusting. Now you can see between switch to switch, you can go and enable some um, IP DSCP trust and in our lab also we have to do that. You can see between switch to switch, we are enabling those ports as a trust port because you can go and control these configurations and all and traffic and all. Now, when your switch is going to some access point, this is also Cisco access point and all. So there also you can go and enable the trust. But when you are going to terminating devices, such as uh, video conferencing devices or IP telephony devices, there you can go and put some conditional trust, some conditional values. But when you are going to dead zone, where you are terminating the network, like printer or biometric devices or any other handheld devices, there you are making this untrust endpoint. That means over this interface, you have to go and create security policies. So anything that is coming from untrusted over this interface, this switch will try to block this because this is untrusted. Right? That's the meaning of this trust point. Again, you can see that like that you can go and mark the trust and untrust you can go and mark them as a dscp marking and you can go and do the conditional queuing and other qs configuration as well that we will see in the configuration part now let's let's focus only on one hardware that is catalyst 2900 series switch although this switch you can see now it is everything is moving to catalyst 9000 but still you have catalyst uh, yes yes 2000 yes. catalyst 3000 in the network right so how we can go and do the queuing how we can go and do the hardware queuing how we can go and understand the qs between the uh, 2000 series switch because if you understand 2000, you can understand 3000, 6000, 4000, 9000, etc. Let's try to understand this. Now it is telling that such type of uh, switches, they have this arrangement. This arrangement means one priority queue, three queue, and one threshold. Right? You can see here. So what does it mean? One priority queue means that in this particular priority queue, you can go and put a voice packet. Or you can go and put the network control packet, such as OSPF control packet, STP control packets, etc, etc. Right. Then you can see that non-priority queues, after that, so once your 1P, so this is actually 1P, once your 1P is done, then you have non-priority queues, right? In non-priority queues, as per your classification, and here the traffic classification will come into the picture. So now in your non-priority queue, as per this spectrum, you can go and put first of all high priority to the call signal mission, mission critical and other traffic, then network transaction and transaction data to other queue, and then best effort to the default queue. So suppose if you have four queue, then as per your DSCP marking, as per your classification, here you are putting the voice traffic, for example. Then you are putting um, business critical. So business critical application and then you are putting some maybe non-business but these are still important traffic and then you are putting some default whatever default is there like uh, your uh, um, maybe file share not file share but uh, what what default traffic we can use anything that is not coming in the voice and mission critical and non uh, business important traffic anything like uh, youtube traffic or maybe facebook or um torrent or 
peer applications, whatever. N number of applications are there, which is a non-business uh, related traffic. You can put in the default queue, right? So what does it mean? While we are doing such type of classification, what's the use and how it will be? And it is not that easy that I'm explaining here. You need to understand this is structure. Now you will understand with this diagram. This is actually a very interesting diagram and it will take some time to understand now. Let's try to figure out this. So what I'm telling here is this that, okay, you have your network control traffic, right? Network control traffic and inter network control. These are the control packets. So these control packets, you want to give high priority. You can see here that in this queue, I have one P, one priority, three Q, and three T, threshold. Okay, so threshold means that you can go and define the threshold means reaching, reaching, reaching 100% and then do the policing. Reaching, reaching, reaching uh, 85% and over 85% you have some buffering like that. You can go and use some mechanism related to maximum threshold in a queue. So what does it mean? I'll try to understand this. Let's try to figure out this. So now if you see here, that the network control and the CS6, what are these? CS6 and CS7, class selector 6 and 7. If you see CS6 and 7, they are in the bottom. They have very high precedence DSCP, 48 and 56, right? They are something that you have to give the high priority. So now you will see here in the diagram that this is going to Q2, right? This is what Q2. And this is going to Q2 and threshold 3, maximum threshold. So it is in Q. Now this is 1P you are saying this 1p right 1p priority this is priority queue this is also a queue so how many queues we have in this first of all try to understand this so if we start with q1 you have q1 you have q2 you have q3 and you have q4 now this uh, q4 You can see in this diagram, this Q1 is nothing mm -hmm. but your priority Q. Priority Q. Okay, uh -huh. this one Q is nothing but one Q. It is a Q. One P is nothing but one Q. Okay. That means you have actually four Q and three, three T. This is priority Q. That means this is next level priority Q. This is after that priority Q and this is the uh, Q4 is the default priority Q. I will see that how it is in this diagram. Okay. So where we are, WIP, that's the EF, expedite forwarding. EF is a DSCP, highest level marking, expedite forwarding. Where it is going? It is going to priority queue. So now you can see in priority queue, we have EF, CS4 and CS5. So CS4 and 5, they are video and conferencing right then class selector 4 cs4 is also going there uh, some because you, you can go to this diagram slowly you will understand so cs4 and cs5 actually going here but a4 will go assured forwarding level 4 so in af you will find af1 af2 AF3, AF4, like that. This number, this higher number means high priority, right? So now you can see AF4, AF3, AF2, and CS2. This is going to Q2. And this is something that I need some more bandwidth reservation. So that's why it is 30%. Okay. So it is going to Q2, but 
I told you earlier that this is Q and 3T, means one Q having three threshold. So now in Q2, you can see that we have Q2 threshold one, Q2 threshold two, and Q2 threshold three. Right? It's a little bit confusing, right? Hmm. How we can understand this? Okay. Um, to do what to do what to do. Okay. Think this is the switch. Two nine six zero. Now in this switch, if packet arrive here, then you can go and do the queuing because queuing is basically software based. So now you may have Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Now one of the queue you're marking as a priority queue. Priority queue. This is your 1P. Right. So in this priority queue, what type of traffic you want to send? So I want to send the traffic related to voice, etc. Why voice related? Because voice traffic, they have the latency less than 150 millisecond. So you have to give them high priority. Otherwise, their logic will go. It's, they will self-destroy. Okay, then you have rest of the queue. But these rest of the queues that you are seeing here, because since this is, for example, 1P, 3Q, and 3T, 3 threshold, that means that these queues further, you can go and divide in different thresholds. So that means that this queue number So this is suppose this is Q1 and then you have Q2 and then you have Q3 and then you have Q4. So what I'm telling that these queues, oops, this is actually Q2. These queues that you are seeing here they are divided into different, different level of priorities, right? And not only the priorities, so Q1 having priority. So in Q1, there is no threshold, but in Q2, Q3 and Q4, we have the threshold, right? So you can, Think this as a Q2 T1 and then T2 and then T3. Threshold level one to oh, sorry, it should be three. Threshold level one, two, and three. Right? So T1, T2, and T3. Okay. Like that in Q, so Q2, T1, Q2, T2, Q2, T3, Q3, T1, T2, T3, Q4, T1, T2, T3, right? So according to that, you can go and do the marking, classification and marking. So now Q2 is high priority Q, means for business related um high priority traffic and then this you can think as a medium priority and then this you can 
think as a low priority or maybe you can think as a default whatever not categorized in q1 2 3 they will go via q number 4 right now let's go quickly and see the arrangement here Now this diagram is a little bit hard to see. So, oh, can I go up and remove this diagram? Okay. Okay. So now you will see that you have Q. Q1 you understood, right? It's very easy because there is no threshold in that. So you can easily understand this Q1. No problem at all understanding Q number one. Then you can see Q2 having three threshold. And in Q2, actually, this is business related traffic. We have uh, CS2, CS3, and then we have <clears throat> um, AF assured forwarding. So you can see the real time traffic, multimedia conferencing, then uh, signaling then multimedia streaming right then uh, cs cs5 is not there and cs4 is not there so like that most of the traffic related to businesses we have here now even the transactional data as well you can see that is in q2 then you can see q number four where we have the bulk data now you can see bulk data where it is in q number for T1 and T2, even the scavenger and bulk data, they are going to queue number four. This is the default queue, right? Then you can see that we have this queue number three, where we have this queue three. Actually, Q3 and Q4, that is there for scavenger data. Now, this is not the exact way that we can also go and configure. This is just the Cisco reference. Cisco is telling to classify to do your QS configuration like this. Okay. You have any doubt in this? Okay. Do not worry because I am going to cover the same concept but little bit com with more complexity with other platforms as well. So now if you go and configure this 2960, you will see that in the configuration, you have to go and first of all, enable this multi-layer switch QS, MLS QS. And once you enable that, then oops, then you have to go and do such sort of marking. So QS cost to DSCP marking, zero. This is what DSCP, just the cost setup, Trust the DSCP setup, and then you have to go and trust different different devices. Right, this is the standard configuration. Everywhere you'll find the same related to QS, and then you have to go and do the rest of the configuration as well. Okay, I'll come to this configuration later on. But this understanding this slide was very important. If you have any difficulty, please feel free to ask. Thanks for joining. We are in day number 14. And today we are again going to continue our QS. It will take some time to complete this QS because QS is big topic and if you see official Cisco QS book it it is it having more than 600 pages I think it's a big book guidebook so yeah it will take time but slowly slowly you'll understand everything so, so far what we have done that we have tried to understand the classification and marking layer 2 classification is COS class of service and layer 3 classification and marking is DSCP, differential service code point. They are part of IPv4 header. Within IPv4 header, we have layer two and layer three classification and marking.
Now, how we are doing this classification and marking? We are dividing the traffic between uh, mission critical traffic, high priority traffic, mid priority traffic, and low priority traffic like that. Or uh, uh, critical traffic, audio, video, voice traffic, etc. that you can see here in this spectrum. The spectrum that we have here, you can see clearly on top, starting on top, we have very high priority, low latency traffic, and then business traffic, and then we have bulk and scavenger traffic. Like that, we can divide these, these traffic in categories and in subcategories. So you have sections and subsections. According to that, you can go and mark it with respect to DSCP bits, right? So these are a standard configuration. These are Cisco suggested configuration. If you go and log into any device, you'll find the configuration like this only that we have. So then we have discussed about the priority queues. So if you see somewhere, and these things you will see again and again and again, let me highlight. So if you see this box, 1P3Q3T. That means that you're assigning one priority queue and three queue with three threshold. That means that in this three queue, you have Q1, Q2, Q3. A queue is nothing but how the data, they are handled by the router or switch. Those are router or switch queue. Uh, later on, when we'll go and study the SD-WAN, you'll find then SD-WAN, we have the V-Edge. And in V-Edge also, you'll find two form factor. Two form factor, one is virtual and other one will be hardware. Now in virtual and hardware, in virtual, the queue is, the queue is total four queues are there. And in hardware, you will find that there are total eight queue. So that means that when you will go and divide the traffic for virtual versus hardware in terms of quality of service. So in hardware, in terms of SD-WAN, in hardware, you have eight queue. And in software, you have four queues. So here you can see that this is one of the example related to four queue. It is hardware, but it is four queue, example of four queue. And then if I go next to any other switch, I'll come back to configuration. I'll come back to this. If I go to any other switch here, suppose 3850 type of switch, let's see the queue design for this. And in, the, in these slides, you will see all those uh, queue design and all. I mentioned here how many queues are there, but we'll check from the, see this is full fledged configuration for N bar. Uh, 1400 plus app and dual class model. We'll, we'll come to this. Before going there, I just wanted to show you some queue. So here you can see. Now this is one of the queue example where you will see that uh, we have two priority, six queue. And in one queue, you have three threshold. So two priority, priority is nothing but queue only. That means how many queues you have? This is an example with eight queue, two plus six. In that eight queue, you have two priority queue, right? So here you can see in the diagram that you have priority queue one, priority queue two, and then the queue that you have so Q number three, Q number four, Q three, Q four, Q five, Q six, Q seven, Q eight. Rest one, two, three, four, five, six queues you have. But in these queues also, you can go and further divide in three threshold values. Suppose this is threshold one, 
this is threshold two, this is threshold three, right? So this will be the example related to uh, three Q, uh, six Q and three threshold, right? So all the time I'm telling about threshold, threshold, and maybe you are unable to understand this. Let me go and quickly draw one diagram. This time you'll understand 100%. So suppose you think that in a queue, how much packet a queue can handle. So according to that, you can go and create the limit. So suppose this is one queue, and in this one queue, I am setting one to three limit. So this is Q versus threshold. Suppose this is threshold, this is T3. This is T1, T2, sorry. And this is T1, right? T1, T2, T3. And these are nothing but the Q. So this is one Q and in within one Q you have three spectrum. This is Q. This is parent Q, right? So that means this is Q1 and T1. Then this will become, for example, just, just for example, I'm giving you this. Anyways, Q1 and Q2, they are the uh, priority Q, so it should start with Q3. So suppose this is example related to Q3, but within Q3 also, you have Q3, oops, Q3, T1, you have Q3, T2, and you have Q3, T3, right? Like that you will be, you will be having Q4, T1, Q4, T2, Q4, Q, uh, Q4, T3, then Q5, Q6, Q7. Now this Q8 that you are seeing in the bottom, no need to give, uh, divide this in the different priority. It's up to us because this is for default traffic. This is, you can think this as a default Q, right? And like that it is divided. So this is the example related to Q. And later on, you will see that you have further, later on you will see that you have more example related to queues as well. So if I go, uh, you can say 2P, 6Q, 3T with rated, weighted threshold uh, queue or something. We'll see that, what is WTT, WTD. Some small, small terms will be there. And let me quickly go and show you some other examples as well. So now you can see that this is Catalyst 6000. Just focus on this part here. Two priority queue, six queues and 40. So catalyst, you can further divide one queue in four threshold values, right? Then let's go and check the Nexus design. So Nexus design, you will see four queue and one, it has only four queue, but in all queue, you have only one threshold. Continuing like this, you can see Nexus 7700, one priority queue, 7Q, all the 7Qs having one threshold, right? So you can see that you have the priority queue. So point here is this, either you have 4Q structure or you have 8Q structure, right? Mostly, mostly because if you are dealing with the good hardware like uh, Catalyst uh, 6000, Catalyst 9000, Nexus 7000, all these good platforms, all this good hardware platform, you have eight QA structure. The only just difference, one, yeah. Just a quick one. So, so this Q, the, I'm trying to understand the Q. Are they the colors? This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. From the top, that is, is yeah. this one is, is eight. The the COS, you count the COS to it as well. COS zero, the white one. CS0 is the because, default Q, Q number, Q number eight. Okay, so zero, one, two, three. So so how do you now count the CS7, six? And starting with four. one, one, two, okay. three, four, mm -hmm. five, six, seven, eight. 
Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay. And these are the policy name. If you log into the Nexus, in Nexus you have uh, QS policy configured by default. So this is the default policy, whole, entire policy. This is the policy name. So 8E, 4Q, 8Q out. Like that's 4Q, Q8 out. Like this you have Q and mapping. And then Nexus. Right. Now you will understand this more and more. So what I'm telling that you have 8Q structure, right? Mostly you will see 8Q structure. In that 8Q, sometimes you have one priority queue. Sometimes you have two priority queue. It depends upon hardware to hardware. So 7700 having this arrangement. And if you go back to... Catalyst 6000, you can see we have this arrangement in Catalyst switch. So in Catalyst switch, actually two queues are there for high priority traffic because maybe that is the that is the network where you have the voice traffic, more voice traffic because you are using Catalyst switch. In data center switches, you don't have that much voice traffic. So that's why you have only one queue reserved for voice. So priority queue, you can see PQ shape to 30%. This is priority queue where we are mapping costs five, six, seven. And if you go and check the DSCP related to that, you can get it easily. So not only the network control and the traffic control, I told you earlier that uh, control related traffic we are putting inside the priority queue plus wipe and video. We are putting in the priority queue in the Nexus. Then you can see that multimedia conferencing real time, they are going to queue number two. Then signaling transaction network management data, they are going to. So you can see again, again in this queue, we have two division going to queue three and some traffic is going to queue two. Rest of the traffic you can see here like this. Maybe this diagram. Uh, this diagram is correct only taken from Cisco and finally the scavenger traffic that is going to the bulk the default queue right so like that we have all the arrangement once you understand this arrangement the configuration part is very easy let's try to do that as well so far so good right here yeah. it's easy so you can understand this so main part that you need to understand is this chart if you know this chart, 80% of QS you will understand. Okay. So let's try to understand the configuration. And I told you that different hardware having different QS configuration style. So when we are talking about 9269960, there you have to go and enable the multi-layer switch QS that is not enabled by default. And then you need to create this configuration called the trust costs model. So then we are doing cost to DSCP marking 0, 8, 16, 20. So see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And if you see here, DSCP 0 to cost 0. DSCP 8 will be mapped to cost 111111. One, 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 one. So, uh, sorry, my bad. So DSCP 8 is 1, 10 is again 1, 12. Is, so 8 to 14, they are mapped to 1. Now that's why you can see 8 and then 16 and then 24, then 32, 40 like that. So if you go to this configuration, the marking you can see. 0, 8, 16, 24, 32, 46, 48, like that. Whenever we are changing here, 0, leave that 0, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, right? And 56. So this is the marking here up to 0 to 56, right? Then rest of the configuration, very easy and straightforward. MLSQ is trust the DSCP and then 
trust the boundaries. So if you have this Cisco IP phone, this Cisco trust sake, IP camera, media player, you can simply do MLS queues, trust these devices. Now the yellow color that you are seeing, they are the interface specific configuration. So you have to go to the interfaces and you need to trust those interfaces. For IP phone, we are using 46. So that's why we have this 46 marked here that the chart we can see. Now, next configuration that, that you are seeing here is this, this configuration is related to queue configuration, right? We have the queues as well. And according to queue, this part, if you understand this part, you will understand the queue CLI configuration. So let's try to understand for next five minutes. So now you can see here in this chart, that we are dividing the traffic. See, best effort traffic, network management, signaling, mission critical, interactive, voice and routing. Like that, you can go and divide the traffic, right? So let's see the CLI configuration that we have, how we are, first of all, divide, creating the classes. So when, when we are creating the classes, you can see that we have the class related to VoIP, Multimedia, these are the classes. Then signaling, transaction data, bulk data, SQ answer. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six classes we have, right? What we are doing? So this, this is a CLA configuration, class map match all wipe match access group, name wipe, right? So once you have this class, then what we are doing in this class? So then we are going to the policy map. This is single policy map. Later on, we have to go and apply this policy map to the interface. So we'll go to the interface and then we can apply this policy map. Now you can see this policy map, we are calling the class and we are setting the DSCP. So wipe, we are setting EF, expedite forwarding. Then multimedia, we are setting, you can see, within the multimedia, we are uh, setting assured forwarding 41, signaling CS3, class selector three. Then for transaction, assured forwarding 21, bulk data assured forwarding uh, 11, the scavenger CS1, and then default that is zero. Like that, we are doing the configuration. This is very easy example related to uh, classification and marking related to me, QS. As a quick question, do you have a documentation that explains this thing apart from um, just this um, table? I have shared the ebook. Oh, I don't have it in the WhatsApp chat. Okay. So you can go and uh, apply this configuration to the interface. Today we'll we'll do that. I'll show you in the CLI. Rest the rest of the configuration. So once you understand that configuration, so either it's a um, three eight two five zero or any switch, any catalyst switch. You can understand the configuration in Nexus switches. We have little bit difference in the configuration, but here you will understand all this configuration that how you can go and apply. So enable the trust boundary and then trust boundary. You can go to the interface and you can trust the device for Cisco phone, CTS, IP camera. Then you should have the class. So you can see here that we have the class related to voice we are marking the cost five if you are marking cost it's up to you you're marking the cost or dscp then signaling cost three then ip phone what we are doing this is the policy for ip phone we are calling the class setting the dscp calling the signaling setting the class selector and default and then we are applying to the interface right now we have one very big example that is actually the 
uh, configuration related to the QS. That is a standard configuration related to QS that you should know and uh, apply to your organization. This is the full configuration. Okay, so let's try to understand this. Now you can see that always first first step is what? Step number one is that you have to go and create the class. So we are creating the class and within the class you will see that we are matching the protocol. You know, you can match the access list as well. Not only protocol, but you can match the access list as well. So here you can see Cisco standard practice this match wipe. I'll come to that. So step number one is matching the class, right? This will be a step number one. Then a step number two, a calling the class within policy, right? So we will see here that we are creating the class and then we have this policy map called marking. We are calling the classes and one by one we are setting the DSCP. Now this is not 100% of QS because at the moment we are only discussing about classification and marking. What about that you have to set the bandwidth percent? What about you have to set the uh, scheduling, the other mechanism and all? So this is not presented here. This is just the classification and the marking part. Right. So, but still you have a step number two. A steps will be the common. Calling the class within the policy. Once you, you are calling the class within the policy, then you can go and set the DSCP. You can go and set the policy, policing, buffering or shaping. You can go and set the Shaping is nothing but the buffer only. You can go and do the scheduling, something like this, scheduling, and then schedule, maybe some. Then you can go and set the drop preference. Like it is um, tail drop or random early detection. Once you have this as step number two, then you can go to a step number three, where you have to go and apply the policy to the interface, right? So step number one and step number two, they are actually very logical means there we are building the policy and step number three that you have to go and apply to the egress interface or ingress interface of the van interface like you know you're applying to the van interface going out or maybe you're applying to the LAN interface anyway we'll see that that uh, where we'll go and apply this uh, up to this point you are able to understand maybe when we maybe when i see it live i, I will understand okay When you do the configuration. Now we'll do the same thing. I'll go and do that in configuration. It's not like this. We have the device. Let's go and. Yeah, that's what that's what we are saying. The, the thing is, we, we teach we teach a um, few topics. Then we do the practice. Then we see how it works and how everything is smooth. And that's the way we'll be able to catch configuration commands you'll get again and again and again and this is say this this funda is to related to your lab exam as well same things same thing you have to do for 10 times but obviously little bit changes are there okay so in cisco you have repetition if you are working in cli so here we are in one of the switch let's see the version for this particular switch what image we have, all of these are fully virtual switches. 
but all these switches having latest images. Version 15, you can see this is version 15 and this is advanced enterprise. So advanced enterprise, three licenses are there, right? Base, one is base license, one is I think uh, enter, enterprise advanced, like that three licenses are there. This is the latest one, although this is virtual image, but in this type of images, you can run any type of CLI command. This is L2 image. Means you can do all sort of switching command and all sort of uh, QS configurations and all. Those things you can do. So now if you go here and go to the class map and if I type question mark, see, match all and match or all means you can see logical and the option is and you know and means and means that one plus two plus three if all three condition will match then only it will work but if you are using or operation so either one or two or three that means any of them will match this condition will be valid right so if like we are following just this document so i'll go and use match all so match all and then you have to give the name this is i am putting this name voice so class map match all voice now once we are inside the c map you can see now we are in the c map class map so here we can go and see we can match the so i just wanted to show you that not only you can go and match the protocol but you can go and match the access group as well access group i think is nothing just this is just the access list you can go and create the access list as well and you can match it so before going any further i'll come back to this let's go and create uh, IP access list just to show you a strander. Okay. And then Then if I go back here, let's see class map here. And then if I can match the access group was one, oops. Name. So both is is taking name address access list and number based access list right even i can go and do match the protocol and maybe in this version it will not take the okay like that you can see here in the example attribute is oh attribute is there this is list, latest image is taking that traffic class wipe telephony then <clears throat> the business class if it has so you can see that you have to follow that command sheet that we have from here you have to go business relevance business relevant so you may have business relevant business irrelevant simply type question mark here so see irrelevant is there irrelevant is there so now what we have done the section class if we go and check the class so we created one class map called voice within that we are putting the access list as well in name of access group and then we have the attribute attribute class for 
wrap like that means simply here so within one class we are putting different type of protocols different type of access list you know and then we have one class ready like that you can go and create the broadcast i will not okay let me do one thing just to save our time that's why I, I have given you all these things in the formatable format means you can copy and paste right simply go here and let's put that here somewhere i can see some error <clears throat> Yeah, the line is, I think when the line is crossing, it is throwing error, but no problem. You can simply check do show run section class. And now you'll see that what classes we have created. Maybe font size is a bit small. So from here, classes, you can see that we have broadcast bulk data was that we have created a scavenger transactional data right so these are the classes at least four or five classes we have a few classes is not created that you can check in your configuration maybe network control not got created and few of them but till this point you have any doubt any doubt you have till this point Simply creating the class, right? And matching the protocol and access list. Very simple. Okay. And then what you will do that then you have to create one policy map. So let's exit from here. Create the policy map. Say, for example, this is marking. This is not full-fledged QS configuration. This is just for marking. We'll see more later on so what i want to match here class voice then i want to set the dscp ef likewise class you can type exit and then you can do the command see broadcast video and then you can set the dscp CS5. And then you can go and give the class real time. If it is not the, there, it will throw the error. So if I type real time in, oops, interactive. The DSCP. CS4. Like that you can go and mark. I'll not go and type everything. Even I have option, I can go and simply copy and paste. So one place it is throwing error class bulk data. Okay, so let's see maybe that is not defined so if i go here and uh, type exit if i type class you see okay. once you are typing class so we are inside policy map once you type class yes yes what you're telling okay and then set dscp af11 some copy paste error is there because this is in different format. It also so there was an error there. There was an error. That's it. Yeah, I just copy paste a problem on that. Let's see. Show run policy map. Now we'll see in the policy marking we have voice, broadcast, real time, multimedia, uh, multimedia streaming, signaling. Network control, network management, network uh, transactional data. Then we have 
bulk data. I don't have this scavenger. Some error was there while doing this class. Right. So like that, you can match this. So again, I have to go inside the policy map. Marking. Once you are inside policy map, it will show you you are in P map. Then you can go and add this scavenger. So then you will go inside policy map and see that is the class map. And then you are setting the marking. Now, once you do this, you have to go it and apply to any of the interface uh, in the van facing interface. So assuming that E01 is a van facing interface. So we can go inside E0 slash one and we can apply it. Now, once you apply this policy, you have to use this keyword called service policy. Okay, so if you go and try to type here policy map or something, it will not understand. You have to go and type this service policy. And then it is asking either input or output. It's type is, I think type is some different thing. Type inspect is there for firewall policy, firewall MQS. Okay, so output, what was that name? Marking. And input. So we, are, we have applied this to the output and input okay ingress and egress direction to the van facing interface right you see how easy it was to create the policy and apply the policy it's very easy right the most important thing here is this to understand the logic if you understand the logic doing this configuration you know for our cci exam we are going to configure maybe 2000 lines of CLI configuration, you know, but if you have good understanding about this, what you are, what you want to do, then it's always easy to do the configuration, CLI configuration and all, right? So your task is this, that go through this, these QS slides, you have the lab in, in your evng file also you can do all these things what you can't do you can't do related to nexus configuration but apart from that you can do most of the things what i will do in next class in next class i will add a rest of the configuration this is just one part this is just classification and marking it's not full you have to go and add the bandwidth logic there bandwidth percentage you have to go and add polishing shaping you know all these logics if you add all these logics like 30 percent more if you learn then your complete qs part will be covered okay both theoretically and practically as well and this is one of the best slides you will see anywhere the slide that you are seeing, this is not this much descriptive slide is not there anywhere. It will help you to understand the QS and still this QS will not end because in SD1 also I am taking QS classes and there also I am configuring the QS from CLI and GUI as well. Okay, if you have any question, please ask. Thanks for joining. Today is day number 15 and uh, we are continue to discuss discussing our QS quality of service topic. And uh, let's see that what remaining topics we have related to uh, QS. Let's try to understand this. So, so far we have learned about the DSCP 
differentiated service code point. We know that TOS having cost and DSCP means layer two marking and layer three marking. And once we have the classification of the traffic, classification and marking of the traffic, then what we want to do? Then we want to do some sort of queuing mechanism. We want to queue the traffic. So high priority traffic will go with the high priority queue. Low priority traffic will go with the low priority queue and all, right? Now, once you go and provide the queue, queuing for the traffic, then what you want to do? So now you will see here that this is not end of the queue session that you have done the classification marking, you have done the queuing, but apart from that, you can go and put some other mechanisms as well. So you can go and put some sort of bandwidth percentage reservations, such as policing and uh, buffering. You can go and do some sort of uh, uh, scheduling as well, some sort of tail drop as well. So those topics we'll go and discuss today. So let's quickly go and see the full-fledged example related to the QS. Now in this diagram, we can simply see that I have one hardware which is supporting two priority, six Q and three threshold. So now you can see that priority Q one and two, they are nothing but the Q, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means I have total eight Q, right? Eight Qs, they are supporting all those features. Clearly you can see here that uh, we have queues. You can see the queues and then you can see that we have the scheduling as well. So what does it mean by scheduling? I should show you this within the example as well. Okay. And you can see this. This is actually a very interesting diagram that you should understand. So now you can see that we can go and do the classification. So here I am doing the classification of traffic, right? And as per the class, we are mapping these classes to the queue, right? So some has high priority, some has low priority. Now within the queue itself, if you see that we are reserving the bandwidth, bandwidth reservation, 10%, 10%, 5%, 10% for priority queue, 20% for priority queue. Now, in this, like in normal routers and switches, you can go and do this configuration. And in sd -WAN also, you can do the configuration, but we know that in sd -WAN we have some GUI as well. So in GUI, you will see in sd -WAN that you have one pie chart, that pie chart should be 100%. That means that all these bandwidths that you will go and add, they will become 100%. So here you can see 10 plus 20, then again 10 bandwidth reservation. So 40, then 10, 50, then 10, 60, 70, and then 5 plus 25. This is total 30. So you can see that bandwidth that you are reserving for different, different classes, they are becoming full. They are becoming 100%, right? So you can go and reserve the bandwidth for high priority queue for 10, 20. And this is actually the real, uh, you can see that best practice example from Cisco. Cisco will tell you to create your classes like this means do the classification for traffic like this, and then do the queuing. So we are doing classification and marking. And then what we are doing, we are doing the queuing, right? Queuing mechanism. So the first thing that we are doing is classification and marking, CNM. Then we are doing queuing. 
in this queuing, we have normal queue and we have priority queue, right? Then third, what you are doing is you are doing bandwidth reservation, right? You're reserving the bandwidth for certain traffic, high priority traffic, low priority traffic, or the volume of traffic. According to the volume of traffic, you can go and reserve the traffic. After that also, to do the queue management, to do the packet loss management and all, you can go and use certain different techniques. So last thing that you will do here is this, that uh, you can go and use either tail drop, or you can go and use weighted early random detection. Uh, you can do scheduling as a round robin, like some other methods are also there that we can go and use, but applying these complex queue, queuing methodologies, you should know that you have these requirements. Right. All these things are coming with requirement. If you do not have requirement, then do not go and utilize everything, all the possible QS tools that you have with you. Okay. So here you can see that weighted tail drop, bandwidth, bandwidth remaining percentage or bandwidth uh, reservation percentage is, is like this. It should be 100%. So suppose if you are giving 10% for priority queue, then again 20% for priority queue, then how much bandwidth you have left? 70% remaining, right? Then again from 70% you will go and reserve the bandwidth according to the remaining bandwidth percent, right? These examples we have seen earlier. So now this is one of the good example we have where you will see that you can go and create the class was, you can go and give the priority because you have two priority levels. So priority level one and priority level two. But point here is this, that you can go and use the keyword called police. So now you are giving the 10% of bandwidth, 20% of bandwidth, then for class control management, remaining bandwidth, you are giving 10%. Then you are giving buffering as well. Buffer means it will go and buffer some of the traffic if it is required. Then you can see the multimedia queue, remaining bandwidth percent, you are giving 10%. Buffer, you are giving 10%. And then we have rest of the queues where we'll go and assign the uh, bandwidth. So here you can see rest of the queue in this line. So you have multimedia streaming is 10%. Then you are giving the buffer for 10%. Then you will see that uh, transactional data. That's also one queue, 10%, then 5%, and then 25%. So this is actually the CLI configuration of this particular diagram. This is the configuration, right? So you do not need to understand this Q limit DSCP AF percent. It's like, it's like little bit advanced configuration that Cisco is giving. It's related to tune the weighted tail drop, but you have other options as well. If you do not use this tail drop option here, then Cisco will go and do their default tail drop. So generally you will not see this Q limit DSCP percentage and all tuning the tail drop uh, percentage, but you will see 100% configuration related to the bandwidth percent and this, these two lines are very important. It will be there in our SD-WAN configuration as well. So assigning the bandwidth and then you are doing the buffering. Okay. So this is actually the base configuration. I'll give you one assignment that in your lab that you have, any lab 
even I can book the lab and I'll share with you. So let's do like this. Today I will share two lab, one lab with Eric and one lab with Temi. That's the lab that this lab I'm talking about last time that we have done. One second. Go ahead. I need the Cisco any connect session. Let me quickly connect to the lab. So I was showing you about this YouTube video. Let me quickly give you the link there in the chat window. So you don't need to go and search for the record. Oops this uh, link okay and uh, where it is here so this youtube video in this youtube video uh, the timing is 59 minutes if you go and start the video from 59 minutes so you'll get a little bit sneak peek of this viral anyways i will also show you in the lab but you have this video as well oh, i am sharing this video to you if you want to learn asa from your own you can go and watch this video it's like theory plus lab it's a complete package you can learn asa firewall from your own you don't need any uh, uh, tutorial for that 100 percent you will learn and understand asa from your own so that's why i am pinging you this Link here and can you put hi in the chat? I'm not seeing this chat window. Where is this chat? That's a problem with Zoom. Sometimes we are missing the chat. Okay, I got it. This is the link, 59 minutes if you want to see that viral will start from 59 minutes, four or five minutes you can see that, okay? Now, why I'm going to give you this viral lab because if you see our lab here, we have something related to Nexus as well, okay? And in the viral, you have this, uh, you can go and drag drop the Nexus images as well. Okay. So you will see Nexus OS 9000. That means that you can go and try Nexus related little bit configuration as well. That is not part of your exam, ASA and Nexus, but just for your understanding, you can go and do that as well. So likewise, you can go and configure the 3850 QS and then you can go and apply to the policy map class default like this to give some shaping as well over the interface as well. Once you have this, right, you can see this is the nesting of policy. Within one policy, we are calling other policy and this 2 2P6Q3T we have created here. This is our policy map. This policy we are calling uh, under other policy where we are applying the shaping methodology and then we are applying this main parent QS to the interface. Likewise, you can go and create and apply the QS for 6000, 6500. Same QS is there. But the Nexus QS is different. The QS is same, but this CLI configuration is very different than the normal uh, QS. And uh, I don't think so that I have lab related to this. Let's just be there with me. If I have lab example related to Nexus, otherwise I'll fetch that lab for you and I will give you so I am not seeing Nexus related uh, QS example, but you know, good thing about Nexus that QS configuration is already there in all the Nexus platform. So if you go and check the running configuration, you will see 
such type of QS configuration as well. Such type of QS configuration as well in the Nexus platform. Yeah, you have any any question? Please ask. At the moment. Right, so I have booked the lab and maybe it will start in 10 minutes. So today by the end of session, I will hand over the <clears throat> uh, viral lab to you and I will show you that how to uh, start two routers and log in and perform basic tasks. So today I'm going to show you that. Okay, so we have almost completed our QS related to wired routers and switches. There are some small topic related to wireless as well. Although wireless is not part of our uh, our training because you know that CCI wireless is different and all those topics are there in the CCI wireless. Uh, CCI, uh, yeah, CCI wireless or CCI enterprise wireless, uh, that track is different. But in this slide, just for your understanding, I have put some slides, maybe in future, if you have something related to wireless coming in your organization. So you can understand that in wireless, we have only four level of service, right? In LAN, we have eight level of service, means you can go and create eight different queues. But here, you can see that all those eight queues, you have to go and map in four queue. Okay, so that means that these four queues that you will create, you have to create like voice. So you have voice, high priority, low priority, and the least priority. Like that, you have to go and map it. Okay. So you can see the classes here. Voice, video, based effort, and background. It's like wireless. So whatever 8Q you have, this 8Q is mapped in this 4Q and in wireless terms you will if you if you go and learn wireless you'll see that you have platinum services gold services silver and the bronze services right that is mapped with the voice video best effort and background this is the wireless QS actually it is easy how we are uh, applying and we are applying these policies from the wireless controller which is GUI based so from the GUI based controller, you can go and create these services and apply to different, different access points. At 2015, you can see the mapping from 2015 that four categories means we have only four classes that you can go and define. You can go and apply these four categories to the wireless. And then some theory I have given just related to uh, QS design that we can go and have a look on that. Okay. So we have completed our topic related to QS. Uh, it is actually lengthy and uh, big topics we have. So only one part is remaining that can I go and show the sample configuration. This is the sample configuration that I will show you. I will log into the router and I'll configure this. You will see that. Okay. Rest, the Difficult part here to understand the classification of traffic, that is the DSCP marking and all. Then how you are mapping the classes to the queue. Once you are mapping classes to the queue, how you are reserving the bandwidth. Once you are reserving the bandwidth, then how you are providing the tail drop, how you are managing those drop packets like tail drop, weighted random, early detect and others. And then finally, how we are doing the policing and shaping to the interfaces, to the classes, right? That is whole and soul of QS. You will not see more than this anywhere related to QS. Okay. Okay, so before going further, what we'll do, we'll go and do the uh, CLI, con I will go and do the CLI configuration for this QS and uh, you also has task that you have to go and create the uh, CLI configuration, create one assignment, try to 
understand these configuration, put it in somewhere in Notepad or something as a uh, standard configuration for your understanding, right? Now, what is next topic? What we are going to study next uh, that I have given you one break here. I don't want to start new topic because this new topic is this section that what is Ceph, Cisco Express Forwarding, MAC address and how this TCAM table builds. What is FIB versus RIB? You know what is FIB and RIB? Any idea? So after this session, after uh, next session, you will understand this 100%. What is Cisco Express forwarding, MAC address table and TCAM table? What is FIB and RIB? If I ask you that, what is routing table? You know that what is routing table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definition of routing table. Yeah, a list of uh, um, routes you are learning or list of network that is disconnected. It depends, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So this QS, is it, is, it, is, it, is it part of the CCI syllabus? No, not there in okay. CCI. Okay. US is not there in CCI, yeah, but you will get it um QS in everywhere. I can Okay, so what I'm telling that uh, what is routing table, right? Let's try to understand the routing table. And then anyways, we have class. So in the class, you will understand the uh, the class related to FIB and TIB. You will understand what is FIB, what is LIB, what is RIB, etc. So what is happening, you know, that you have your LAN network so this is your LAN network and your workstation PCs are connected within the LAN network. So let me go and one second, let me go and draw this. So I have the LAN, suppose this is the LAN switch. And with this LAN switch, this LAN switch, let me go and connect quickly. Three PCs are connected. Th think that these are the PCs. And then you have your LAN connected to this. And then you have your, for example, this is the WAN connectivity that you have. So let me go and just wanted them break cable or something like that, not like that, but anyways, um then let's go and connect this also. Yeah. 
And think that here also you have your LAN. I'll not connect PCs and all, but this is one of the other LAN that we have. And uh, okay, so I'll go and connect only one PC here just for our understanding. Okay, so one PC, stay with me, connected. So this is the connection we have, and we have routers. So we have uh, router one, we have router two, we have router three, right? So what is the goal? Our goal is this, that uh, the traffic that we have will go from here, right? Go from here, go from here and reach here, right? So <clears throat> this is my source. And for example, this is the destination, right? So um, this is my organization. So let me quickly go and draw that this is my organization. This is my org. And this is something ISP. And this is my other branch. Source is my branch and destination is also my branch. So let me go and draw quickly. So this is, if I can draw, oops, can I draw? Anyways, no problem. Okay. Right. So, source and just you, you understand this, right? Now, what I want to highlight here is this. This is very important. So, I want to highlight this that you will, you can, when you will go and apply the QS, right? So, you will apply to the LAN facing interface and you will apply to the van facing it oops you will apply to the van facing interface right here and here now let's focus at this point of time in only to the van facing interface because land facing interfaces the qos you are applying is for classification and marking because in land facing interface you have much throughput bandwidth you are not worried about that but when you are connecting to the ISP, sending your packet, then you're applying all sort of buffering, queuing, mechanism, scheduling, everything here. Okay. Likewise, when you'll go and apply the QS, you'll go and apply to this interface, you'll go and apply to the this interface. Now, when we are applying QS to this interface, that is land facing interface, generally this is ingress coming packet coming packet do the classification and marking then it can go to the ip phone uh, pc any other device video conferencing etc so incoming packets that we are doing applying is actually related to the classification and marking but when you are applying the packets here and this interface Right. This interface when you are applying, that is actually inbound and outbound. From here outside, coming inside, both direction, in and out, both you are applying. But when you will go and apply the QS in the LAN interface, then you will apply to the 
inward direction because here you want just the marking classification and marking right so that's a very important point that i'm uh, telling you here at this point of time by the end of the session you can go and watch this recording this is very important part related to qs and so practical point now what we want here what i want to show you uh, telling you about the routing table so qs is different thing right routing is different thing that's that's something that you may have so here i have only one interface but this interface may have 200 sub interfaces and you may have 200 lan network right when we are talking about lan network here for sake of simplicity we have only one network but you may have 10.1.1.0 you may have 10.1.2.0 you may have 10.1.3.0. Likewise, you may have so many other network. You may have 10.1.x.0, right? So you may have n number of network. These network, you have to go and define the gateway. So where you are defining the gateway, gateway will be defined on the layer three boundary, layer three boundary, right? Either it's a layer three switch or router. So for example, for the sake of simplicity, that we have only one network like this. This is my network. And this particular network that we have, having gateway defined on this interface. This is my net gateway for all the network right gateway means in your laptop also you are giving ip address subnet mask and gateway from where it will go outside and come inside gateway is defining because we want layer 3 communication suppose this is 1.1 1 .1, and suppose this is 2.1 so they are part of same LAN network, right? Same place. So in this, you don't need anything. They can do layer two communication, right? From here to here, they, they can go and check the MAC addresses and they can chit chat with the help of this switch. This is one of the switch. They can do some local communication, right? But once you want to reach to some destination, this destination IP is, for example, 20.1.1.10. Then the 10 network, right? This 10 network that you have here, it should go and no reach out to this 20 network, right? 10 should reach 20, but who will know? that 10 has to go and reach to 20. That is your router. Somehow the router, they have to go. So router knows his own network. Router know that, oh, I am belonging to 10.1.1.0 slash 24. That's my local network. It will be there. It's my local interface, local network. But somehow I need to learn 10 dot, sorry, somehow I need to learn 20.1.1.0. That is some remote. So how they will learn? Routers, they have to build the routing table. Someone will send some advertisement via routing control packets and they need to learn. Likewise, router will send their advertisement. So how this particular router will know that uh, he has to reach 10.1.1.0, right? Because this is a remote network for him because his local network is, is a local network, right? So routers, they have to exchange their routing table, topology table. According to that, they will learn the local and the remote network, right? According to that, they will understand how to reach and where to reach. But this is not the full story. 
full story you will understand when you will understand the fib versus versus rib the mac table and the all those things that means in the next session you will understand more about this oops this philosophy that we are talking here is not like this um, this much straightforward but generally this is the way they are learning the network so what is routing table is the best part path to reach out to the destinations right any doubt any question in this can ask me if you have any doubt please No doubt, right? Like that, I will draw the diagram and I'll explain you. So don't worry about the classes and all, you know, you will understand everything. I told you earlier that we just, just started. Uh, so don't worry about that. What we are going to do here, I'll quickly go and check if my viral session got started. Then I will build the lab <clears throat> in the viral. And then I will show you one example related to QS. Likewise, you can also follow the same path. So let me quickly check the where else it's in. So once you go and utilize these uh, credentials, then uh, your lab is there. In my screen, it is showing very small because some resolution issue is there. Let me check this uh, screen resolution so you can see this. And we don't have option to change the resolution. I need to change my laptop resolution. Let me go and do that. Mm, display setting. Oh, resolution. Um, I think, uh, what? Maybe this one. It changes. Okay, now let's go back here. Now you can see it's big. Okay, so once you open the lab, you will see this type of dashboard, right? VM master, when, once you open that, then you will see, should I see the full screen? Still, it is actually loading. You will see this design page here, right? So if you click design, let me stretch it. And then this new page here, if you click this new page, it will ask you some name. So I'll go and give the file name, lab one viral. You should give the extension viral, otherwise it will not work, finish. So now new page will come. Once you have this new page, lab one dot viral, then I want two routers and one switch. So I will go and use this simply drag and drop. It's very easy. Like in GNS, just pick this, put here. Oops. Put one more, like two I have created. And then I need only one switch. So I'll go and click. It's not dragged up even. You click and it will work. Then connection is there. Like in GNS, you are doing the connection, just connect it. Once you have this lab connected and everything, then you should go and click this save button. So now you can see lab one is having no asterisk. That means it's a save topology. This got saved. And if you want to do designing and replacement of the devices, you can do it. There's no problem. In this, in the bottom, you can see some rectangles. So suppose this is site one, this is suppose site two, this is suppose ISP, like that you can, even you can change the colors and everything as well. All those uh, 
options are there. Now, once you have this unsaved topology, you can see this become this asterisk and lab one. Again, click save. So this lab got saved. Now you have to go and start this lab. This is just the topology part, right? So to start this lab, what you need to do, you have to go and start this Chrome. And then it will ask you username and password. I'll give you the username and password in the chat window. So give the username and password and click login. Let's see if it is correct. Yeah, it's logged, logged in. Now, once you come to this particular page, you will see this option called launch new simulation. Simply click there and then call the local file, that's it. So now you can see that choose the file local viral. We need to choose the file that we have created today. So click choose file and then it will redirect you to watch the folder where you have the file. So you can see clearly here VM Mastro. Go there, go to workspace, my topology, lab one viral, and then click launch. That's it. Once you click launch, then within two to three minutes, you will get the telnet and the SSH port numbers for these devices. Right. So just be here. It will become green at the moment. This is amber because this is starting in the background. And then this reachability will become true, true, true. And then you will get some management IP to log into these devices. Now you can see building, phase is building. And you can see some telnet IP is there. So it's something like viral demo, Cisco 1700. These are the telnet ports. So what I can do, generally I use um, secure CRT and <clears throat> I'll go and create a new, new folder here. So I'll go and create new folder. I'll mark this as a viral lab. Right. And once I have this folder, then I'll go and create new session here, new session, um, telnet, next, host name, let's pick host name, and the port number, 17123, like this. Next, session name, I can go and give this is router, RTR1 and then double click. Like that you can bookmark in your super party or empty party as well. So from your laptop you can go and log in. You have option here as well. Directly you can uh, telnet and SSH from desktop as well. Okay, I, I'll show you that part as well. One second. That if you don't want, generally it's easy to use the way that I am using. You can see here these ports are there. You can see. So I can simply click here to the console and should start from here as well. But you'll see that it, it will be a little bit slow and all. But from there also you can start. You don't need to do empty putty and all. But it, it will be a little bit slow. The other thing that you can do that, uh, where is the topology? Let's go back to the topology here, VM Master. If you come here to this VM Master page, here it is. And, uh, uh, okay. From here also you can start from this place as well. 
launch simulation. New simulation is already launched. Oops, new simulation is coming up. But leave that complexity that the way that I'm telling that's the easy way to start. I'll start like that. So once we have our lab, which is built and running, then you can go and do anything. So let's go and do host name. Router one. Just a quick one. Which one do we have to go with? Because it's a bit of there's a bit confusing right now. This one. This way, right? You showed like two or three. Ways. No, this way just use this method. The one that we can see. You you build the lab, it's, right? It's not, Your lab is it's, built. It's not then, clear. Yeah, I'm making it clear now. So you have your lab, right? You built your lab, correct? So far, at this point, you're okay. Yes, it, it, a little bit though. So once you build the lab, then you will get the, once you launch the lab, you will get this telnet IP. Let's use this IP, that's it. No need to do any extra thing. Just use this IP to telnet. Okay. This is the URL and this is the port number. And you can log into the lab and you can practice. So what I have done that I have turned it to this particular URL and port number. And I'm inside one of the router. If it is not clear, no problem. Uh, you try, you will try from your side. You just watch the video recording, pause and play, pause and play. Try from your side. Otherwise, anyways, I am here to help you. Okay. All right. So QS configuration. First of all, you have to write it down the QS configuration in the notepad. And then you have to practice it. So you have to go and create the policy map. For example, in the slide number, that is in the slide number 206. The name is 2P. 6Q3T. This is the name. I need, so before creating this, you should go and create the classes as well. Before creating the policy map, you should have the class map, right? So you should go and create some class map. This I have explained you about this match any or match all. So voice, this is in slide number 205, prior to Q1, match the DSCP. For the voice, we are matching EF, expedite forwarding. Then I'll go and create the prior to Q2. And there I will go and match the DSCP, CS4. This is there in the, uh, in our lab example. Then I'll go and create one more class. That class will be control management Q. These are just the class names that we are creating. Now we are matching the DSCP CS7. CS6, CS3, CS2. Right. Then match any. Then rest of the classes. So multimedia, conferencing, You is the name of the class. We'll go and match the DSCP. Assured forwarding 31, assured forwarding 32, assured forwarding 33 like this. Then we have the class related to 
transactional data. So we'll go and create the match any transactional data. We'll go and match the DSCP AF21, AF22, AF23. And then finally, we have the scavenger traffic. So for that also, we'll go and oops, create the class. A scavenger bulk data queue. And here we'll go and match the DSCP. That's uh, that should be very low priority DSCP CS class selector one AF eleven AF twelve and AF thirteen. So once we have all these class, then we'll go and call these classes within the policy. So we'll go to the policy map, and then we'll call these classes one by one. So now we'll go to class this class priority q1 and then within this class we'll we can go and set the priority level one right and then the policy rate percent 10 then we'll go to the other q that we have video that other class that we have. So what is other class, other class, oops. Okay, it should be video as per the document. So one is was, one is the video, but I have written as was, so I'll use it. Then here we'll go and use the priority level two as per our configuration. And policy rate bandwidth will go and give 20% bandwidth reservation. Now we have two classes. Now we'll go to the class number three, even you can exit and you can go to the class. So now we'll go to the class that we have created for control management queue, this one. So we'll go here. And inside that we have bandwidth remaining percent. Then if you want, you can use this Q buffer, but uh, we don't have this Q buffer command in all the platform. So Q limit is there, that's, that's okay. This is more than enough bandwidth remaining percent that you can go. And then you can go to the rest of the class. So other class is multimedia. This multimedia class will go. There also we can go and give the bandwidth remaining purpose uh, percentage. So as per our diagram that we have seen in the slide, those are 10, 10, 10. In, in final last two classes, we have 5% and 25%. So here also this is 10. And if you want bandwidth remaining percent is 10. If you want, you can define the Q limit DSCP and here it is like A43. You can go and give the threshold for this, maybe 80%. It's up to you, but this is very granular. This is actually very, very granular that we are doing here. This configuration is like within Q, you are giving some limit, Q buffer limit. Okay, likewise, you can move to next class. And that next class is, so after uh, multimedia, what is that next class we have? After multimedia, we have created the class related to transaction data. Or just you can follow that uh, document that we have. So now we are inside the transaction data. Here also we can go and give the bandwidth remaining 
percent 10 or 20 like that here also if you want you can do the queue limit and then finally you can go to the class scavenger so again i can go to the class oops q and there also i can go and give the bandwidth remaining percent maybe 15 percent but just follow the document and the configuration so if you do everything related to all the class then finally you have class right which is called class default so in this default class, you can go and give the remaining bandwidth because everything will go and add up to 100. So if I go and give remaining bandwidth, bandwidth remaining percentage, for example, percentage 50%. Oh, it's, it's taking, but we should not do like this. It should go and check. So Q1, 10, Q2, 10 then media 10 so 30 then transactional data 10 40 and then this 15 that means total is 55 that means remaining bandwidth percent should be for default class in in this example that i am doing here it should be 45 percent then it will add everything to 100 percent so now you have the class now you have you are calling the class within the policy map and you are putting the bandwidth percent so what is the next thing so in this example we are creating policy map within policy map so i'll go and create one more policy map that will be for example 200 mbps that's the name so i have 200 mbps bandwidth in my van interface now i'll go and call the class called class default and in this class default i want to give some shaping average for 200 mbps that means one two three four five six seven one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I should give eight zeros to make. And if you type question mark here, it will tell you that it should be in the bit rates. So bit convert to byte and all. You can do go and do some Google conversion. So I just wanted to give 200 Mbps in bits. So it should be like this only. See, it is throwing error. That means I'm giving some more zeros here, which is not acceptable. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, now this is 200 Mbps, so it's taking right. Now we'll go and call the service policy that we have created the policy map here. What's the name of our policy map? The name of policy map is this so you can go and do this i'll do, do show ip interface now we have created everything right but we haven't applied it when you have to apply it you can go and check your van facing interface so which is my van facing interface suppose this is my van facing interface this is gig zero slash one so now i'll go to interface gig zero slash one do no shut this is my van interface right so once i am here i will i can go and give service policy you can see input and output i want to apply it to output uh, in the egress direction and then the name of the parent queue that is 200 mbps and that's it, our QS is configured, right? Go run, last map. These are the classes we have created, show run, um, policy. 
these are the policy map we have created show run interface kick zero slash one this is the policy that we have applied to the interface right this is the way that you can go and do the configuration any question hello everyone i'm going to give you offer related to cci lab in this lab what you will find so let me quickly show you that in this lab you have multiples switches you can see you have more than 16 switches 20 routers you have a steven full-fledged lab actually this is complete uh, cci enterprise uh, 1.0 lab where you can do section one section two section three maybe you know that in cci exam you have three different sections means already sections are defined but generally these three sections that students are practicing and in this three sections you can perform everything all the tasks you can perform in this particular eve ng lab you can see the version and the supported images this is exact match that we have in the exam as well so for example for sd van you need to work on v edges and the uh, v manage release is 18.4 that's the same release we have in the exam as well so this will be your very much uh, similar lab setup that you have in your CCI exam for your practice purpose. Now, what you can't do in this lab, you can't do lab related to DNA because in this Eve NG lab, we don't have Cisco DNAC integration and you can't do uh, ICE lab as well because in this, we don't have ICE integration as well. For that practice, you need full-fledged online rake from any good place you can go and have it but apart from that apart from 2.1 2.2 actually you can go and perform all the tasks even if you are not practicing for your cci exam for example you are practicing for your ccnp and you want to check your ospf knowledge bgp knowledge mpls knowledge uh, sd van knowledge all those tasks you can go and perform in this lab. With this lab, I'm providing the video guide how to do all those tasks. Even we have the lab guide as well. So you can simply follow those guides. You can simply go and complete all those tasks. Suppose if you are new to the technology, so I have multiple free videos in YouTube and Udemy that you can go and refer to upskill your knowledge, to learn the technology, and then simply you can go and use this particular lab and you can break any CCNP CCI exam, means you, you will pass it um, uh, easily. Now, what is the cost? And these are the sections that we have in the CCI exam. So what is the cost of this? Because I'm offering this for the student. So I put very little, a small cost here. So you have to pay only 150 USD to get this particular software. And uh, how you can go and get it, you have to email me. So my email address, you can send me one email request. Let me write here, Ratnesh721, Kumar, 721 at the rate gmail.com just email me and uh, send me the request and i will give you this particular nice software full-fledged software evng software or the file where you can go and practice your ccna ccnp cci sd1 full-fledged sd1 is there so if you can go and watch my youtube videos in youtube i have 22 hours SD van uh, video recording file and so many SD van videos I have uploaded in YouTube. Those YouTube videos also you need some lab setup, right, to practice. So even if you are not preparing for your CCNP or CCI, simply you want to learn uh, Cisco SD van, you can go watch my free videos in YouTube. Use this particular lab setup and you can perform your SD van. You can become master in the SD van. Likewise, if you are preparing for CCNP and CCNP, again, we know that we have N core and one elective. For that also, you can go and perform all the tasks related to routing and switching, OSPF, BGP, everything. 
in this lab. It's a full-fledged lab. So I will recommend you to send this email right away. Take this particular lab, practice, enhance your skill, and become very good in the market so you will get high paid salaries. All right. After that, you go and watch the technology video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. Today we are in day five and today's topic is quality of service. So let's start. And do you know what is quality of service and why we are using? Yeah, uh, QoS is um, a network traffic control mechanism. Um, that is used to like con um, ensure that like um, applications that are critical on the network um, have, you know, um, like good bandwidth to run whilst others that are less preferred, you know, are limited. Their capacity on the network is limited. So it's that's a mechanism that lets you, you know, regulate how traffic, you know, uh, for you to prioritize certain, uh, prioritize traffic for certain applications. Right. That is perfectly correct statement definition. And uh, if I ask you that, what type of QS we have means can you apply QS in LAN and can you apply QS in WAN as well? Um, yes. I mean, apply yes. I, 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 yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, you can apply QS in LAN and then you can apply it in data center during the WAN. So when we are applying QS in WAN, at that time, obviously, we know that the WAN links are slow compared to LAN. So LAN may be 1 gig, 10 gig, but WAN may be 1 gig or 100 Mbps or 500 Mbps. That means that when we are applying QS to WAN, at that time, we have some sort of uh, fast sender, slow receiver. So what I'm telling, suppose if we have two WAN router, in between these two WAN routers, if we have ISP in between, and then if we are applying QoS, so we are applying QoS on different interfaces. Suppose we are applying QoS on this particular interface and this particular interface. So at that time, we know that the QoS that we are applying, it is applicable over the WAN interface means this queue is applicable over this particular interface in between this to this, something like that, like here in this section and this section. So we know that the link speed at this interface is slow and that's why we are applying QS. But furthermore, if suppose if we have LAN switches connected with this particular WAN router. So if I go and draw the link in between the here and here. So in that case, we can go and apply QoS over these interfaces as well, like this interface, this interface, this interface, this interface you are telling to if I put marks here means numbers here so suppose this is one and this is also one and this is two and this is also two and this is three and this is three so you are telling that we can go and apply QS over number one over number two and over number three as well is that correct a statement Yeah, question to you. So you can apply to all these interfaces, right? So 
that means one thing is for sure that when we are using QS quality of service, quality of service doesn't mean that all the time we are applying quality of service QS for better utilization of bandwidth. Sometimes these QS will provide you some other features as well. That is irrespective of bandwidth speed, right? Yeah. So what is that feature? Um, it's just like, um, like traffic shaping in the, in the, in the, in the environment just to, you know, um, not necessarily, um, bandwidth optimization, but in terms of, um, you know, shaping the traffic so that some traffic are preferred than others. Okay. So you are telling that traffic... what you are supposed traffic, to <laughs> Yeah. Traffic mm -hmm. shipping. Suppose if I go here and connect mm -hmm. some IP phones. Mm -hmm. Suppose you have IP phone connected. Suppose you have some video conference going on. Suppose you have telepresence mm -hmm. going on. Suppose you have other business mm -hmm. applications going on like uh, uh, SAP or any type of critical mm -hmm. business applications. So suppose if you have three or four mm -hmm. different type of business traffic, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That is going below mm -hmm. the switch that is connected with some LAN core or LAN switch. So at that time, mm -hmm what you want to do with QS. So in that particular case scenario, you are doing something called traffic classification, classification and marking. Classification, yeah, yeah. So you are doing the classification such as critical, non-critical, web, telepresence, mm -hmm. bulk data, junk traffic like that, relevant, mm -hmm. ir irrelevant applications. And then if we have some um, low latency type of traffic, we, we are going to see all these things. If we have mm -hmm. some traffic which need less uh, loss jitter, in that case, even you can go and put some DSCP marking as well. Different uh, differentiates, differential service code point, or maybe you heard about this cost class of service, TOS type of service, these type of, uh, bit marking, marking bit that we are assigning to do classification and marking. So one use of uh, quality of service is that you are doing classification and marking. Okay. Right. So when you are when we are studying this QS, you know QS is all logical. If you go and think about your network and inside that network, what type of requirements you have, according to that, you can go and learn this uh, QS. So one thing is classification and marking, C and M. One other thing you pointed out here is the shaping, right? You told mm -hmm. earlier shaping. Shaping and policing. Mm -hmm. Oops. Shaping and policing is one other thing. Okay. okay. And then what other mechanism we have in QS? You think like that. You think like a classical case of ambulance. So normal traffic is going on and then ambulance is coming. So everyone is giving uh, you no know, pass to ambulance to go. Why? Because they are they have some priority defined so there may be some traffic which has some sort of priority mm -hmm. so you can go and define the priority for that traffic those are those may be uh, wipe related traffic wipe related voice related traffic those may be some video conferencing mm -hmm. right so you can go and define the priority. You can do buffering in case of shipping, policing. You can go and do the classification and marking. Like that, there are different type of mechanisms. 
that we are applying with QoS. Now, once we know all these mechanism that QoS can do this, QoS can do this, QoS can do this, QoS can do this, all those terms, then the very important understanding about QoS is this. Suppose if we are applying this to Cisco hardware, so where you will apply, right? So this QoS, again, further you can divide in two parts. One is hardware QoS, one is software QoS. Now, what's the difference between hardware QoS and software QoS? Henry, can you tell that what is the difference between hardware-based uh, QoS and software-based QoS? That is um, the the software is you where you configure you configure the whole thing to tell it what um, you know how, you know in terms of utilization of the traffic and then the hardware is like having the equipment like uh, load balancers and uh, that's how I understand it yeah yeah so software that means software means that you can do some sort of programming coding some some sort of things right yeah. hardware means that is something related to line rate something which is in hardware it has to deliver software you can put some sort of load balancing class class based weighted you know fair qs low latency q whatever logic Whenever you are applying any type of logic, those logics are applicable to software only. Once it is in hardware, it has to deliver. So if something is there in the hardware, you can't do much. What you can do, maybe you can do some sort of shaping or prioritization, but you can't do much programming. You know, because in that case, you have to go and program the hardware or the line cards. So hardware, the example for this hardware is that if you go and study QS, you'll find that QS may be applicable at two positions. So suppose this is a router, you can go and apply to the ingress. This traffic is coming, hitting to the router. So you can go and apply to this interface and then traffic is leaving that router or switch. So you can apply to the egress. Egress means now, it is ready to go to the wire. So this point, this will be hardware QoS. And when the traffic is coming, hitting to the router, it will be software QoS because here you can go and apply some rules, right? You think whatever rule you are applying, where you will apply. If you are doing some programming, something, something, you have to go and do to the ingress direction, not in the egress direction now egress direction also you can do something we'll see that how we can go and do up to this point it's okay right you understood everything uh no i mean so if you're if you're using coding or you're using commands then you do it on on the ingress interface like the interface hitting the router yeah and then if you are uh, doing, um, if you're using a, if you're using a hardware component, then, so you still have to do configuration on the, on the egress. Yeah. So I'll explain, you will understand this. Yeah. It's a little confusing. Yeah. And we have lab as well. So you will understand. Now this is actually very important point that we are going to discuss now so let's focus on this suppose i have one router here and then this router is going to connect with isp mm -hmm. suppose this is isp cloud mm -hmm. and then this router is connected with lan so this is lan link and this is one switch here now I will. I want to go and apply QoS on this interface, and then I want to go and apply QoS to this interface in two directions. 
So the point here is this, that when you are applying the QS in the van facing interface here, and you will see that later on, the best practice is this, that simply we are going to this interface. So we have interface here, simply we'll go to this particular interface and then we'll apply the QS. We'll not put the direction here. So that means the traffic that will go and hit on this particular interface, that means the incoming traffic. Here you can go and apply all the software, hardware, QS, whatever. Everything is applicable. But when the traffic is going from here to the wire, here you can't apply everything. So there is limitation that what type of policy you are applying here. So that's why if you have one policy applying in two direction, we have to create such type of policy which is applicable in both the directions. Got it? Yeah. Anyways, I'm recording. You can check the recording as, as well. So now when we are applying QS here, here you will see that I think maybe 99% of time we are applying policy in the inward direction, in direction. Okay. We'll see that one live example. Actually in SD-WAN mm -hmm. we have this QS topic, full flares one hour QS with configuration. So there also you will understand more when we'll do the lab. So in the land side, this is what land facing QS. So in the land facing direction, we are applying in the in direction. And in van facing, we are applying in both in and out. That's the best practices, Cisco best practices. Okay, okay. so knowing okay. these many things, let's go and check what we have in the slide, oh. these slides. So in, a, in and out, does it mean it's going to be on a global configuration? Global configuration, 100%. Right. So over okay. the interface, over the interface, you are applying it. Because you will apply to interface, right? Yeah. So whatever interface we have, suppose this is gig 00. So we'll go to gig 00 and we will apply QS. If okay. we have DMVPN tunnel, for example, this is DMVPN hub, and then we have DMVPN spokes, then in that case, you can go and apply over the tunnel interface. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right, so let's go back and let's go continue and check the slides we have. Now we'll see most of the things you will understand. So when we are talking about QS, QS doesn't mean that all the time, you are talking about congestion all the time. You are, uh, you have lack of bandwidth and you are applying the QS. This is not the correct statement. QS, we are applying not only for bandwidth management, but for traffic management as well. Traffic classification and management as well. So here you can see that different type of QS we have classification and marking. So you will classify this is wipe traffic, this is uh, bulk traffic, this is business traffic, this is irrelevant, this is relevant traffic. Like that, you can do the classification and marking for the traffic. Then you can go and provide different type of QS enhancement mechanism, such as, uh, uh, such as, uh, what you can see that uh, congestion management, that is one of the thing, such as giving the prioritization to the traffic, such as you can see here as well, scheduling. Um, the different type of drops are there, like tail drop or weighted or early random detection, etc., etc. We'll see that one by one. But the point here is this, that QS is not only to provide you optimum bandwidth. QS has different type of features as well, related to different class of traffic. Okay, now we know this thing and we can go and configure QS and apply to the interface, but, but very important thing. So suppose if I have one router and this particular router, the very, you know, very, very important thing about QS is this, because Cisco, what they have done, so whenever Cisco is seeing that, okay, this company has this type of router, this is good. So they are acquiring that particular company. So Cisco has acquired Nexus brand. 
Cisco has acquired Viptela, Cisco has acquired Catalyst Switch, Cisco has acquired different router companies. And then they are rebranding that particular company as Cisco company, and then they are Cisco routers. So you have different type of hardware like ASR, ISR, Nexus, Viptela, ISR 1000, etc. So very big product line is there. Now, when we are talking about this big product line, this particular big product line, all these hardware. So, for example, Catalyst 3850. This hardware structure is different than Catalyst 9000. Right. So, if hardware will be different, QS will be also different. So, QS structure, QS hardware in Nexus is different than QS in routers or switches. So, if QS is different means QS hardware is different that means that the way you will go and apply the QS is also different and that's right if it is a software command or configuration so that may be common for all the for example iOS XE operating system so you can go and apply iOS XE QS based configuration to all the iOS XE software right but this iOS XE may be used by 3850, may be used by Catalyst 9000, may be used by some other um, routers as well. Their hardware is different. So one very difficult uh, thing we have in QS to learn and become master is that different, different hardware components. Software, okay, you can go and configure same type of configuration everywhere. But if you go and check some old switches like 2960, so their QS configuration is very different than 3850. Nowadays, Cisco has tried to unify this operating system. So that's why you have unified type of configuration. But still, if in, in your infra you have different type of hardware, you will see that QS configuration is different. Okay. So now, because we have different different types of hardware, the configuration is different. So in that case, what we have to do or we are doing that in that case, we are creating the configuration. We are doing the classification and marking. And then that particular configuration, we are mapping with Q. So this is termed as a Q. Q means hardware Q. You will see that in Cisco, uh, SD van Viptela, we have, for example, eight different Q. So uh, starting from Q number zero. So suppose I have Q zero, Q one. This is hardware Q up to Q number seven. That means total eight Q, right? So Q zero and one, they are for control plane traffic or they are for uh, a very critical business traffic or voice related traffic. You can think as a VoIP related traffic. And then from Q number two to Q number maybe four, you can reserve for business critical applications. Then five, six, seven, you can use for less, tra uh, less uh, priority traffic. Generally, you'll see that uh, companies, for sake of simplicity, they are dividing their traffic in three different uh, categories. One is high priority traffic, then mid priority traffic, and low priority traffic. And then that high, mid, and low priority traffic, they are mapping with different type of queue. So suppose now nowadays you can see that we have two version of uh, routers or switches right you have hardware based you have software based now if you have virtual routers or switches in that case you have only four q q0 q1 q2 and q3 so in that case you can go and apply suppose q0 is reserved for control traffic or network traffic so high priority traffic you can map with q1 mid with q2 and Q3 with low priority traffic. Why we are doing this mapping? Because if you reserve your traffic for high uh, high priority traffic or high higher queue, that means that uh, there is less tail drop. If traffic is getting dropped, so in these queues, the chances that traffic, because they have some priority, so the chances of getting dropped will be 
less rather than in Q3, you have that chance. It can be dropped because this is low priority traffic. Till this point, if you have any question, please ask. Okay, no question then. Very good. You know, um, we have covered only 20 to 25 minutes, just one or two slides. But I will request you to go and watch this recording one more time because we are discussing very, very important points. You know, these are very important points related to QS. After this class, you can go and watch any QS video or you can read any document you will understand. Okay, so this is very important. Now we have four or five more slides to understand whatever we have discussed earlier. So now you can see now how good this particular slide is. Even for design perspective, you will see that clearly it is telling that, okay, you have voice related traffic, you have video conference traffic, you have telepresence traffic, you have uh, data traffic. Now all these different traffic in blue, orange, red, and violet, all these different color marking and traffic, we can go and do the classification and marking. Now we will see the nature of the traffic as well and the latency and jitter criteria as well. So voice related traffic, it should be delivered within 150 milliseconds. Otherwise, it will get expired. Like the logic of that particular packet will get lost. It's, it's like that. It should be delivered within 150 milliseconds. Likewise, the video conf traffic, but telepresence has latency of uh, 200 milliseconds. Now data traffic that you can see, since this data traffic is using, oops, uh, using TC, oops, TCP, retransmits that means that if any congestion is there traffic drop is there that means that particular server or client they have to reinitiate the tcp transmits and if you have too much congestion if you have too much delay in that case you will see if you go and do the packet capture with wireshark you will see in that capture you will get too many retransmits packet right so According to the nature that we have for loss latency jitter, you can see the bandwidth as well. Cisco is suggesting the bandwidth criteria as well. So according to this loss latency and jitter parameters, we should go, right, and give the priority in the hardware queue. Because when the traffic is in the wire, at that time, you have to make sure it should be delivered within 150 milliseconds, within 200 milliseconds and all. Right. So this is nothing but you can go and check the nature of traffic. According to that, you can go and do the classification of the traffic. Now, let's see the example here. Now, this is the software based configuration you can think this as ios xc based configuration and in this configuration you will see that we have classical configuration related to voice so what we are doing so first of all the policy name is van then we have classes so class is voice we are giving priority 10% Again, for class video, we are giving priority of 23%. Then critical data, 15%. And then random detect. Random detect means, uh, I, will, I will explain you what does it mean. Then you will see this data field. And then you can see this scavenger traffic, which is, we are giving very less bandwidth per, uh, percentage for that. Then you can see this class network critical. Um, then we have service policy, then we have default policy. So you can see clearly that the policy that we are creating here, this entire policy, it is over gl uh, global configuration. So you have created the policy that doesn't mean that we have applied this policy. We have to go to the WAN interface because policy name is WAN and then we have to apply this in or out. Okay. So I, so I have yeah. a question. So let's, 
I want to understand. So the this policy uh, map one, the percent, the percentage wise, which is the percent ten, then twenty three, then fifteen. What are you basing it on? Is it like hundred percent? Then you are dividing it or something? Always this will be hundred percent. So when we'll go and configure this over. SD van, you will see that you have to give this 100%. Suppose if this is 10, 23, 15, 19, 5, 3 automatically the remaining will be 25. So let's add this say 10 plus 23, 33, yes. 33 plus 15. Suppose this is 35 plus 15. So that will be 50 minus 2. So suppose this is 50. I'm adding this roughly 50 plus 20, 70. 70 plus 5, 75, 75 plus 3, 78, and then 25. Roughly this is 100, means this is 100. Okay, Bandwidth so, is 100 and you are dividing it. Yes. Okay, so yeah, so in this case, you are um, you are dividing in such a way that the one that you want higher will take like, you know, higher percentage, like, so I'm looking at uh, voice like this. You're giving voice ten percent. So that means, it's, I mean, or maybe like a scavenger is the least. So you divide it. You give that one the least. On uh, say, I want to do this on my environment. Yeah. And I want to uh, apply the policy. Is it okay? Uh, so you can think like this: that uh, uh, you have to think in terms of nature of business as well. Suppose this is call center. Suppose you are working for call center. In that yeah. call center, you have to give more bandwidth to voice traffic, right? Because your business is depending upon calls. Right. Now, suppose I'm working on one enterprise network where my calls are less, internal calls are less. So what I will do, but still I want that my uh, VC, my chancellors, my CEOs, whenever they are doing this uh, conferencing or video conferencing, they should get some dedicated bandwidth. But that is not frequent. They are not doing that. So whatever bandwidth I have, according to that, I can fix 2%, 3%, 4%. But if it is a call center, I have to give 90%. Right? So it right. depends upon the nature of business now for example in my organization if i have to give 50 percent to the tcp based traffic or web based traffic so in that case i have to give that much percent so this qs configuration that we have for organization it is not like one time you have to change the setting as per the traffic requirement it should get changed the numbers should get changed okay right. so now in this con this is not full configuration in this configuration you can see that wipe a uh, voice we are giving some bandwidth percent right and then you will see that in the critical data section we are putting random detect dscp based okay so if you go to slide number one you should understand this that in QS we have different different type of mechanism. So in QS we have classification and marking, and then we have some sort of queuing and dropping. So this queuing and dropping is something that it has different type of mechanism. Dropping mechanism means tail drop. So if it is non-critical data, if bandwidth is not there, use the method called tail drop. Drop it. Now, suppose if it is a critical data and you don't want to drop, then in that case, you can go and use a weighted random early detection, W red. So what W red is doing that even before doing the actual drop, they will see that these traffic, these traffic, these traffic can cause problem in future. They will start dropping it before actual drop. That is weighted early random detection. That, that's the thing you can see here. That the random detect is DSCP based. So here you will get multiple options. If you go and type question mark, you will see options here that it's a tail drop or weighted random early detection drop or whatever. It means three, four options are there. So QS 
is very important topic. You have to optimize the configuration. It's not like we'll go and simply do some configuration and it will work. You do the configuration like a standard configuration and then you should go and optimize that configuration. Right. Is this, is this for the buffers only or is this for the buffers? This is for the? The buffers. The, sorry, buffers, yeah. okay. So, mm -hmm. so buffer is different thing. Uh, we'll see that that uh, how we are applying the shaping policy and uh, policing and shaping. But this is something like priority. If we are giving some bandwidth percent, that is priority. Buffering is different thing. Okay. okay. All right. Now, other thing I told you earlier in this video that we have two different types of QS. One is software, one is hardware. Now you will see here in this diagram, suppose this is a big router. And if you see this diagram, you'll find that this portion is software based QS. Why? Because you can see different apps. So how many queues are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In different, different queues, you can see some queue has uh, two packets, some has three, some has four, five, six, right? So here you can go and do all type of programming, algorithms, scheduling. You can see class-based weighted fair queue. Or on top, you can see LLQ or CBQFQ. These are the best queuing met methodologies that we have. Either we can use LLQ. So if uh, voice traffic is there, we are using either LLQ or class-based uh, weighted fair queue. Now, you will see here that in the software-based QoS, you can go and apply all the mechanism. But once it is on the wire, so this is hardware queue. So here you don't have much thing to do. Here you can do some sort of, we'll see that uh, if we can do some buffering here. So here you can do some sort of buffering, some prioritization, but you can't do much here. Okay, so this is a very important aspect related to QS that it's not simply creating the rule and applying it. We have to optimize this as well. Okay. All right, some other informative slides. So as you are talking about the shaping, so you can see that why we are using shaping. And we have discussed this earlier as well, that behavior of, behavior of TCP uh, traffic transactions that at the moment they are hitting the peak and if packet drops are there, they start retransmitting and then your traffic bandwidth will go and drop to 50%. Rather than you can use some sort of shaping with some mathematical calculation. So you can do some sort of buffer as well. And then you can apply to the interface. So two mechanisms are there, polishing and shaping. Policy, policies will simply chop up the traffic means it will go and drop the traffic rather than in shipping it will go and uh, shapers typically delay excess traffic is smooth burst and preventing unnecessary drops so that's a difference between policies and shipping both are congestion avoidance mechanism so what are the mechanisms we have at least you have two one is congestion avoidance one is a congestion management. Okay, congestion management in QS, congestion management is different thing. Congestion avoidance is a different thing. So congestion is there. You can avoid is it or you can manage it. You have to check that the congestion avoidance, how we can do congestion management, how we can do, right? Now this is, this is the last slide for today. And this is one very good example that will go and try to understand. And this will clear most of your doubt. And then I'll, uh, later on we'll go and see. So other headers are there. I will not discuss this today. We'll discuss it later on, but let's focus on this. Now you will see here in this diagram, very nice diagram here, you can see that you have one gig interface. In that gig interface, you have 150 Mbps bandwidth, subscribed bandwidth. 
and in that again it depends upon the nature of the business so business is mostly using video or audio or uh, critical data or business data etc according to that the first task is this that you do classification and marking so here you can see that we are creating this is this is called nesting of policy so we are creating child policy and parent policy and then this child policy we are calling inside the parent policy and now you can see that uh, eric was asking that how we are applying it you can see that we are applying to the interface you can see that uh, the direction as well output the best practice is this that you can go apply to input and output but in that case uh, some policy which is use usable for input may be not usable for output so you have option you can create two different type of policy as well like parent one parent two child one child two and you can apply to in direction and out direction in the same interface that is also possible okay so now let's see here that we have one policy whose class so we are doing classification and marking here we are doing classification so what classes we have we have class you can see i am highlighting the classes here we have these type of classes and then finally we have some default class so one two three four five six one two three four five six if i miss something seven because one is default so these classes we have and for video you can see 23 percent for OS 10 percent like that you have the percentage of bandwidth that is the 100 means 150 here 100 percent bandwidth utilization means you are using 150 mbps of pipe so that means that this will use 1.5 right no 15 mbps so this 15 mbps is reserved for wireless traffic 20 50 why because 10 percent of 150 is 15 so 15 percent like this this is something i think 25 uh, so 15 plus 15 30 and then 3 that means this is something like 35 to 40 percent a bandwidth reserve for video like that you have reservation here you will see that for class data we are doing some random detect as well this is um so i told you two mechanism are there uh qs management and what was the other avoidance so congestion avoidance congestion management congestion avoidance now you think from yourself that with which particular mechanism we can do and avoid the congestion so this is congestion avoidance mechanism means before even having the congestion you will go and start drop random detect drop it suppose if i go and use tail drop here by default i think tail drop is there or weighted early random detection so that will become congestion avoidance mechanism right congestion management this classification and marking is some sort of congestion management because you are doing that just to avoid the congestion in future right but again you can we'll see that checklist as well later on we have more and more slides related to qs so we have one full-fledged class coming up maybe after two three days related to qs related to different different hardware how we are applying the qs now this entire class that we have done today is based on that what is qs why we are using it what type of different mechanisms and their sample configuration this is the sample standard configuration Mm -hmm. right so so far if you have any question please feel free to ask mm -hmm. hello everyone i'm going to give you offer related to cci lab in this lab what you will find so let me quickly show you that in this lab you have multiples switches you can see you have more than 16 switches 20 routers you have a Steven full fledged lab. Actually, this is complete uh, CCI Enterprise uh, 1.0 lab where you can do section one, section two, section three. Maybe you know that in CCI exam, you have three different sections 
means already sections are defined, but generally these three sections that students are practicing. And in this three sections, you can perform everything, all the tasks you can perform in this particular Eve NG lab. You can see the version and the supported images. This is exact match that we have in the exam as well. So for example, for SD-WAN, you need to work on VAGES and the uh, vManage. Release is 18.4. That's the same release we have in the exam as well. So this will be your very much uh, similar lab setup that you have in your CCI exam for your practice purpose. Now, what you can't do in this lab, you can't do lab related to DNA because in this EVNG lab, we don't have Cisco DNAC integration and you can't do uh, ICE lab as well because in this, we don't have ICE integration as well. For that practice, you need full-fledged online rake from any good place you can go and have it. But apart from that, apart from 2.1, 2 2.2, actually, you can go and perform all the tasks. Even if you are not practicing for your CCI exam, for example, you are practicing for your CCNP and you want to check your OSPF knowledge, BGP knowledge, MPLS knowledge, uh, SD-WAN knowledge, all those tasks you can go and perform in this lab. With this lab, I'm providing the video guide how to do all those tasks. Even we have the lab guide as well. So you can simply follow those guides. You can simply go and complete all those tasks. Suppose if you are new to the technology, so I have multiple free videos in YouTube and Udemy that you can go and refer to upskill your knowledge to learn the technology. And then simply you can go and use this particular lab and you can break any CCNP CCI exam means you, you will pass it um, uh, easily. Now, what is the cost? And these are the sections that we have in the CCI exam. So what is the cost of this? Because I'm offering this for the student, so I put very little, a small cost here. So you have to pay only 150 USD to get this particular software. And uh, how you can go and get it, you have to email me. So my email address, you can send me one email request. Let me write here, Ratnesh721, Kumar721, at the rate gmail.com. Just email me and uh, send me the request and I will give you this particular nice software, full-fledged software, EVNG software or the file where you can go and practice your CCNA, CCNP, CCI, SD1, full-fledged SD1 is there. So if you can go and watch my YouTube videos, in YouTube I have 22 hours SD1 uh, video recording file and so many SD1 videos I have uploaded in YouTube those YouTube videos also you need some lab setup, right, to practice. So even if you're not preparing for your CCNP or CCI, simply you want to learn uh, Cisco SD-WAN, you can go watch my free videos in YouTube, use this particular lab setup and you can perform your SD-WAN. You can become master in the SD-WAN. Likewise, if you're preparing for CCNP, and CCNP, again, we know that we have N core and one elective. For that also, you can go and perform all the tasks related to routing and switching, OSP, BGP, everything in this lab. It's a full-fledged lab. So I will recommend you to send this email right away. Take this particular lab, practice, enhance your skill, and become very good in the market so you will get high paid salaries. All right. After that, you go and watch the technology video. Thanks for watching. Thanks everyone for enrolling this course. In this course, you will learn all the technologies related to CCI Enterprise. But in case you are looking uh, and you are preparing for your lab exam, please feel free to contact. We are running some sort of 100% guarantee program to make you pass. I will provide you the lab, resources, everything. If you want to know more about this offer, 
you can go and email to this particular address. Anyways, in this course, you are going to learn all the technologies. This will be very useful course to you. But in case you are planning to write your lab exam, just feel free to contact us. We'll provide you all the guidance, all lab related ticks, techniques, all the passing techniques, etc. So please do not hesitate. Feel free to contact us and we will provide you and we will assure you that you pass your lab exam in first attempt. Thank you. Thanks for joining. We are in day number 17 and today we have topic related to quality of service. So today we are going to study QS. Now QS is also type of localized policy that is residing within the VS devices. And we know the QS statement that if we have congestion or if you have anything related to uh, network, uh, what you can say, network delivery, then you are using QS. Generally, QS we are using when, when we have uh, high sender, low receiver, something like, means you have inconsistency in a network and you want to balance that inconsistency in the network. So you have someone who's sending fast, someone who's receiving slow. So there you need to go and apply QS principle, quality of service principles to manage that inconsistency. Now, when we are talking about QS, we know that in our network, we have two parts. Two parts means one part is WAN section and one part is LAN section. So what I'm telling, suppose there is one switch or one router who is connected with the van and the other side interface assume that this is in the LAN side, right? Now we know that LAN side interfaces may have gigs or 10 gigs of interfaces, but the van side as per our subscription, how much bandwidth we are, uh, we are agreeing with the service provider may be 10 Mbps or maybe 50 Mbps, 100 Mbps, etc. So this side, you have some limitation related to bandwidth, right? Now suppose if you have so many LAN interfaces, suppose in this case, I have three LAN interfaces of one gig, one gig, one gig, and all these one gig, that means three gig of aggregate, it is sending the traffic to 100 Mbps link, Obviously, we have congestion. Obviously, we have issues in network, right? So how we can go and address the QS related to WAN and QS related to LAN. So LAN side also, you will apply QS. Why? Because you want to classify the traffic. Even it is a LAN side, but it's still maybe someone is using Facebook, uh, Facebook, YouTube, watching YouTube videos and all. And then you have something corporate traffic. So still you want to classify the corporate traffic, the high priority traffic, the voice traffic with the junk traffic or bulk traffic, right? So this is not that QS we are using only for providing the bandwidth and avoiding the congestion and all. We are using the QS for the traffic classification and prioritization as well. Generally, the uh, traffic classification you will do in the land side and one side obviously you can go and use policing shaping uh, rewriting the uh, dscp values and all so knowing this fact let's see that how we are using quality of service within the van within the st van now you can see too much theory here too much theory here too much theory here right but the point here is this that all this theory if you go and read simply copied and pasted from the Cisco sites or Viptela sites, that uh, in the case of uh, SD-WAN, our scenario is very different. Why? Because our topology is quite different. So in case of SD-WAN, we know that we have at least two interfaces, two types of interfaces. One interface is WAN interface, and other one is a service side VPN that is LAN. 
so transport vpn and service side vpn now within these transport vpn we know that we have ipsec tunnel so that means when the packet will start from the lan side so suppose this is the actual payload and then you are adding the ipsec encapsulation or the header informations related to what's the tlog source destination esp informations and all then within that packet you have to go and add some sort of qs mechanism as well right so you can see that you are doing the encapsulation here in cap will happen over the egress interface of vpn0 and then this side here the decap will happen decapsulation and actual source has to deliver to the actual destination like that so encapsulation and decap decapsulations are happening but where actually the qos is going to apply in the packet flow let's see this diagram so if you go to the next you will see that packets that is coming from the local side from the lan side then we have we are creating the rule related to input classification then we are putting the input ACLs policies then the centralized policy is coming from the vsmart then route lookup is happening and then you can see when it is going to the egress so ingress up to egress how we are applying the policy you can see here in the life of packet scene so then we can go and apply the scheduling rewriting of policy and then it will go to the egress and then it will go inside the van side within the ipsec tunnel so this type of classification ACLs and policies everything is happening and how we can go and create this policy we will come to know in the upcoming slides now is it the new thing that SD-WAN device is doing? The answer is no. In the normal routers or switches also, the same thing is happening, same classification, policing, everything is happening. Only new thing here is this centralized policy that is coming from the VSmart. Rest all the things you have, almost same we have in the other devices as well. Now I will go you and I will go and continue and I'll show that how you can go and apply, create, you know, do all those things. But before reaching there, let's understand some more theory about QS. Now we have, so in nowadays, in modern days, we have two type of uh, devices. One is hardware based device. One is software based device. That means that you have hardware VH and then you have software VA, software VA, you can install over hypervisors or AWS cloud or any cloud. Now, likewise, for the QS also, you'll find that in that case, we have two different types of QS. One, we have hardware QS, where we have Q depth starting from Q0. So the Q depth, depth is, because it's a hardware device. So in case of hardware, you'll find that Q will start from Q0. Q1 up to Q7. That means you have eight Q in hardware-based architecture. And in the software-based architecture or the VH, you have only four Q, Q0 to Q3. What is the importance of Q? Is, is this Q thing is new? No, the Q is there in all the switches, all the router, etc. It depends upon the hardware architecture, the ASICs architecture of that particular device. Now, again, if you go and study a little bit more, so you will find that there are some Q that is reserved for high priority traffic or controlled traffic. So what does it mean? It means that uh, think about that you have two routers, router A and router B. And these routers, they are forming OSPF. Suppose I am running OSPF in between router one or router two. So router one and router two, they are connected with some physical interfaces. And router one and two, they are going to run OSPF. Now OSPF is a control protocol, right? OSPF is a protocol that will form the neighbor table in between 
two peers, and then they will go and exchange the route. So the OSPF, when they are building, actually that that is a control mechanism. But when you are sending some data, and then that data, when will when it reaches to that device, it will check the OSPF shortest path. So the movement of that particular data within the device, it is using the data channel. But OSPF protocol or any type of protocol like OSPF, STP, MSTP, BGP, whatever type of protocols we have, they are using the control mechanism or control channel. Control is directly related to CPU. So they are CPU intense process because they are doing some computation. They are doing some manipulation to find out the best path and all. Now, that's the very important statement that I'm going to make is this, that all these control mechanism, all this control traffic, they are putting inside Q0. Q0 is nothing but a reserve for high priority traffic. And it's true. All the network control traffic or the very sensitive traffic we are putting inside the high priority queue that is generally Q0 in SD1, that is Q0 or Q1, right? So suppose Q0 is reserved, then how many queues you have? Now you have either three queue in software queue, seven queues in hardware queue, right? So next time when you go and write your QS policy, then you will go and utilize these queues. Now, if you go and read all these documents that is listed here, let me show you the queue thing where it is. So here you can see, if you come to this uh, slide, you will see that you have queues and you have queue one to seven that is available for data traffic. And then all control traffic is transmitted over queue zero. That's clearly mentioned here. Let me really clean this. Let me try to highlight. So when you watch the recording, you will see that. So Q0 is reserved and used for both control and low latency traffic. Oops, what I'm doing. Okay, so I need one highlighter will go. Yeah, so you can see Q0 is reserved for both this and then LLQ. So Q0 is there for control traffic, but Q number one to seven is available for data, data traffic, right? And if you have software queue, then in software queue, you have only four queue. So Q0 is for control and then Q1 up to three, they are for data, right? So that is the one statement I just wanted to make now. What about uh, creating the queues and applying in the sd devices? Is it difficult? Is it hard? The answer is no, it's actually very easy and it is very, very simplified. So in QS, on the SD WAN QS, we have something called wide area or WAN related QS, and then we have something called LAN related QS, right? So you will see here that you have that QS, and what about the rules? So this LAN related QS and WAN related QS, I'm going to show you in the example when we'll go and form the uh, local policy and the local policy will create the QS. You will understand 100%. Then what are the steps involved in QS? How we can go and build the QS and apply it? Actually, there are six steps and those steps are very easy. Here you can see all those six steps. So, uh, so first of all, you, you should go and do class two Q mapping. You can see a step number one class two queue mapping. Then you have to go and call a step number one inside a step number two, where you have to go and create the QS schedulers. Okay. Now a step number two, you have to go and call inside a step number three, where you have to call all the schedulers inside QS map. And then we know from our Cisco knowledge, whenever you are up whenever you are creating the QS, you have to go and apply somewhere. So step number one, two, three, and six, they will go hand and hand, and they are related to WAN QS, wide area network QS. 
then we have something step number four and five where we are creating the ACLs access control list and those ACLs are there actually applied to the LAN side interfaces. So we have WAN side, we have LAN side, right? So now we know the theory about QS and it's very much same that what we have studied in Cisco world as well. Like uh, the OSPF and BGP, that is also very much same that we have studied in our routing and switching world. Like QS is also, the principles are also very same. So you can see that we are creating the class map and we are applying the class to the queue class to the queue, then we are creating the schedulers and the classes we are calling inside the schedulers and then we are putting bandwidth percent, buffer percent and drop type. It is a tail drop or red drop or you know, like that. So then we are creating scheduler two, scheduler three, scheduler four, and then we are defining the bandwidth buffer and the scheduling method uh, methodology then all these qs schedulers we are calling inside the qs map once you have the qs map then this qs map you will go inside vpn0 you'll go to the interface inside vpn0 suppose gigi0 slash one and then you are applying this here but vpn0 is what type of interface vpn0 is nothing but your transport vpn this belongs to WAN interface, right? Then what about the classification? What about the LAN or service side VPN QS? So if you have VPN one, and suppose inside that you have interface Gigi three. So here you have to go and apply the ACL. You will see, and this, this ACL, this access control list is 100% different than what we have studied in Cisco. In Cisco, what is ACL? Access list. Access list name either a standard or extended and with some statement like permit IP, this, 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 source testiness, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's just an entry related to some network. But here it is different. In SD-WAN, this ACL is very different where we can go and do the classification and marking. So far, you have any difficulty understanding the theory? No, no, I don't. All right. Then let's go and understand the lab because lab is also very easy if you understand the theory. So six points. What are those six points we have? Those six points we need to understand here is that create class to queue mapping. Then QS schedulers, inside this you are calling this where you are defining what is the bandwidth percent, what is the buffer percent, what is the tail drop or what is the drop mechanism, dropping mechanism. Then step number third is you are creating the QS map and then inside QS map you are calling the QS schedulers. Then step number six was that you have to go and apply this QS map over the VPN zero interface. In between we have a step four and five to create the ACLs for the LAN interfaces. Okay, so that was the whole thing and we'll first of all we'll understand the QS configuration and then I will go create and I'll show you. So let's go and okay, go to any of the data center device and let's see that do we have QS because actually it was there. Show run VPN zero. You will see that over VPN zero, we are applying it. This is the last thing. Then if you go and check the second last thing, show run policy QS schedulers. So you can see that we have the QS scheduler name, best effort, where bandwidth percent, buffer percent drops. Then we have business data. Then we have video. Then we have voice, LLQ, low latency queue. LLQ is using high priority queue, either Q0 or Q1. 
then we should go and check show run policy and then class class map right so you can see the voice is mapped with q0 video is mapped with q1 biz data map with q2 best effort uh, mapped with q3 so this policy this policy is falling under which policy this policy is falling under localized policy and in previous session we have seen this that localized policy can be cli based can be template based right so we have both the option we can go and create the cli policy apply it or we can use the template now it is it is good practice that we should check the template based options so what we will do we can go i will show you both but we will go and use the template template based um, localized policy okay we'll do that now before going there now whatever result that you are seeing here van qs and this this also belongs to van qs and this also belongs to van qs so the question here is this that uh, what about lan qs can i show you that yeah so if i go here show run policy access list you can see that we have access list wi-fi LAN classification and for VPN 20 like that. Why? Because Wi-Fi, see this is access list name Wi-Fi. We are making this, we are putting this class as a best effort because best effort is mapped with Q3, list prior to Q. Then we have LAN classification. We are matching the DSCP. There we have the uh, 46 DSCP with class voice. 34 with video. This is just the classification and marking. Then best effort there. The default is going by the best effort. Then you can see that we have one more ACL access list that is VPN. Uh, name is VPN 20, where we are putting with this data. Now we know that we have. VPN zero. So where you will apply the QS, WAN QS over VPN zero. And then where you will go and apply the LAN QS, you'll go and apply the LAN QS over the VPN 10, 20 and VPN 40. It is not listed here, but VPN 40 is for guest. So if you go and check show run VPN 10, you'll see that over VPN 10, we have interface and in this interface it is not applied we'll go and apply the acl that is related to lan classification so we are going to apply this this acl over this interface over here okay and then we have one more vpn that is vpn 20 so we will go and apply the this type of uh, ACL over this interface. So that will give us the complete picture, complete picture in the sense that, uh, suppose this is the device we logged in, this is DC1. So we have VPN zero interfaces, suppose this is gig zero and gig one, here we'll go and apply the WAN QS or QS WAN. And then the LAN interface, suppose this is gig 2 and this is gig 3. This is VPN 10. Here we'll go and apply the LAN ACL. And here we'll go and apply the, this is our VPN 20. Here we'll go and apply the biz type of whatever name is there, ACL. So here we are doing the classification marking marking classification here we are applying some sort of a strict policy related to class 2 q mapping related to kios schedulers bandwidth percent etc etc and then we are applying with the van qs command all right so i hope you understood the theory so far because now we are going to add the missing pieces here 
first I, I will complete these configuration which is not completed complete and then we will go and create our own and verify okay so why not let's go and apply the acl here and inside vpn 10 so let's go to the lab first of all i should show you these policies so let's go to the configuration and template and configuration and policy we should know that which policy is active in the first place because if you go to the localized policy you may see so many policies but here it is telling that which device it is attached right so let's see this localized policy baseline where it is attached and it is not showing here with this and this this is something which is also attached so let's do one thing localized policy baseline go here go to the templates and uh, device template and uh, DC click edit where you can see this you can see this inside the additional template localized policy baseline it is connected right so now what we will do we will go to the policy and we will see that what is there in the localized policy baseline. So let's click here, edit and see. Oh, is this CLI? Oh, so you can see this is CLI based policy. And in this we can see infra route, DC VPN 10 network, VPN 20, all branches. So there are so many ACLs are also created. And you can see the route policy. There is that uh, G9 infra routes. Infra routes are 100 and 172. Then you can see that uh, there is other route policy. Deny VPN 10. Deny, like that it is there but any pro, no problem these are the route policies then we can see this land classification is there right so land classification it should be applied to vpn 10 and there should be some other as well like biz traffic so it is there it is there applied in the template so now what we want that we want to apply this to the interface so we can go here and click uh, edit. We should go to the service, oops, not here. Let's go back to the template. Configuration and template. Once we are here, go to device template. I should know that what is the template name for VPN 10 and VPN 20. So for that, you have to go to edit. service vpn once you reach here then you will see that vpn 10 is dcn dc vpn 10 and dc vpn 20 like that we have the name this is the vpn 10 and 20 and what's the interface name because we have to go and apply this lan qs over the lan interface so dc vpn 10 interface and what's the name here this name is dc vpn 20 10 and 20 right so now we can go to the feature template and we'll go and search dc vpn 10 and 20 so dc vpn 10 
it will come this you can see it is attached with it is attached with two devices it will come this and this so what we will do here let's close and let's go and edit this because we want to add the ACL that we have in this interface. So once you go and open this, you will see there should be something related to, oh, this is not interface, right? So we are doing wrong. We should go to DC VPN 10 interface. No problem. DC VPN 10. Why the interface is not coming here? No, I don't want this. I want the interface. So interface, let's search with this. I got so many interfaces are coming, but we want TC interface. So where is that? VPN 10 interface and a better thing that we can do like this VPN 10. Now it will tell us all the VPN 10. So DC VPN 10 interface, I can see here VPN 10. Now we should go and click edit. And once you are here, you will see clearly you will see one tab related to QS. So you can see that ACL and QS, click there. And the ingress uh, ACL or egress ACL. Generally, we are applying to the inward direction. So you can go here, make turn this on global. Make this on. And the moment you make this on, you can see one uh, box is coming. Put that. Land classification update. Go next. Next. Remember, in the last class, I have shown you one thing that over the VPN zero, we have removed this van QS. So once you have to go apply this van QS, QS map van QS, you have to go to the interface over VPN zero and you have to apply it, right? At the moment, we have applied the ACL over this interface. You can see it is coming here now. Now it is active. ACL land classification. Likewise, we can go to VPN 20 and we can apply that as well. So this is like how we can apply it. Now question here is this, that how we can go and create this. So creation also, we have two option. Shuren policy. You have option here that if you have this CLI thing, you can simply copy, like you can do like this, say confi policy class map, right? And then you can do the class, say for example, voice, Q, zero. Like that you can do the mapping, you know, class, then class map, uh, video and then capital V and then I you can see if you type question mark it should come in so you have to go out and type like this the point here I'm telling is this that uh, like that you can go and create right you can go and create the class and you can map with the queue this is the CLI way or you have some policy somewhere, you are editing the policy and applying it. Just the CLI way. Show run policy, class map. Show run policy, 
key ups class map and then the QS to links and then the QS map because QS map like that. So what I'm telling that if we have to create the policy, I can copy, go here, go here, policy, local policy. And on top you can see we have policy related to CLI. Add policy. Uh, QS CLI policy. QS CLI, whatever name we can give, no problem. And then I can paste here. The configuration I copied, I can go and paste. Oops, I think I pasted it twice or single. So we can paste that and we can go and remove the extras that we have. Remove this, then go below and remove this and you can go and add. All right, so we have this. Now this is the CLI based policy. Now what we need to do, if you want to apply this, you have to go to the templates and device template. And here, edit. Additional templates. Update. It may throw error because the LAN QS policy we have applied to LAN and it is not here in this. So maybe that's the reason it will throw error, but like that, you can go and apply this policy. You can create and apply in, within the template. This is all about what? This is all about CLI policy. Yeah, it will throw error. It will tell that the LAN policy that we have created, actually we have applied this access list, this access list, don't have the reference. That's why it is throwing error, but it's okay. We understood this. So what it is telling that when you are creating the policy, you please add this these policy this policy as well right. so i i can go here let me complete so you should understand this so let's go here go back and let's go back to the policy one more time and central localize policy and we can go and click edit once we are here, then we can go and click enter. And now we can go and update. And now you can go to the template. Uh, templates. Device template. DC, edit, additional. Now this time we have all the references, so this time it will work. So this is the way that we can go and create the CA line uh, and apply it, right? Now the question here, next question here we have is this, that it still seems very complicated. I don't know all the CLI configuration commands and I want to create this policy. Do we have some easy way to create the policy? The answer is yes. We have easy way as well.
to create all these policies as well. What is the easier way? We have the easy way to use the GUI template. Okay. So once it is successful, then I will go and show you that how we can do this with the GUI template. See, it is successful. Great. Now let me quickly go here and show you this. So if you go here, sorry, not here, a policy. If you go to the policy, it's coming up. And then if you go to the local policy, and if simply if you add policy, and if you go next, now QS, configure the forwarding class QS, add the QS map, create new. Click create new. My new QS, like that I'll give. Now you can see there is one pie chart type of thing means the circle. So what you need to do, simply click this edit button. Add queue option is there on top. That also we'll see. Everything is here, you know, everything can go and use. So this is for Q0. By default, Q0 is using everything 100, 100. You go and click here, add Q. Q1. Bandwidth, I want to give this much. Buffer, this much. Scheduling, I want to do random early. Save. Now we'll go and add Q. This time Q number two. Maybe more bandwidth because everything should be added and become 100. So now this time you see that 56, 12, still 32 is uh, zero in in zero is still we have 56 and 29 see all these things are coming then we'll go and add one more queue because in our lab we have software queue that means we have only four queue this time we'll go to queue number three queue number three and then the remaining we should have something that is not crossing 100%, otherwise it will throw error, see? So that means how much we are left with. So we need to do that calculation. So how much we are left? We should not go more than 56 and 29%. So let's go here now again one more time. Should not, okay, let's go to queue number three, make little bit less than bandwidth less than 56. This should be less than 29 like that. 12, I can give, tell you, not with adjust. So now you will see that 32 is there in Q0. Like that means just showing an example. So now you have created this queue policy where we have class. Class, this is class to queue mapping. Then we have the scheduling. This is the scheduling, buffer bandwidth and all. This is the scheduling. And then we have the QS map that we are creating. Within QS map, we have this. So now we have this QS map created. Now we can go next. Now next, it will ask you about the access list. So if you want to create your own IPv4 access list, you can go and create. If you want to import something, you can import. Say LAN VPN 10. And then if you create, click here, it will give you all sort of options related to match the DSCP and all and all and all. So DSCP packet, 
packet length priority protocol source and all those things which is generally not there in the normal traditional van so if we have the policy already known for example for this i want to match the dscp 46 for voice like that you can go and match and then the best effort so likewise we can also go and match the dscp for example 40 for example not okay i will take 46 no problem on that with this dscp what we are doing with this dscp we are matching the class so class is for example voice action is accept save then again add one sequence match the dscp 34 class is maybe video accept then one more match the dscp maybe 22 class is data action is accept and then there is default statement so for all the default we'll go and match the dscp maybe 12 or you can leave this dscp as well do not match anything just give the class as a best effort and then you have this default statement which is we want to give the default as a accept save it so i created only one lan vpn or even i can go and give the name as a lan classification also there's no problem we know that where it is applied and all so lan classification save so now we have created the van qs I'll go back so we have this van q what is the name of this van qs oh it is apply over vpn0 right so the name is van qs so we have created this just using the name but our rule is very different I just wanted to give the same name. So if I go and apply this, you don't have any problem because it is applied to the VPN zero and VPN 10 interfaces, these names. So you're telling already this is there. So un I'm unable to. Yes, I'll do one thing, van QS one. So now we have the van QS. Now we have the LAN QS. Uh, I'm not creating a route policy. We have done this in the previous session. Even if you want to do that, so you have all, oops, let's go back. You always has option that you can go to this policy and import the existing. Right, so we can go and import the existing deny infra, but I'll not use that this at the moment, just to show you. Cancel it and go next. What's the localized policy name? The van QS should have some other name. Uh, local policy like that, anything which is unique. Say this policy. So now we can see that how we have created the policy with respect to GUI. We have created the policy with respect to CLI and then I have shown you with the GUI as well. Both ways you can go and utilize, use it. Now, if you want to apply this, again, you have to go to the device template and there you have to add this. And then the QS map you have to add to the VPN zero interfaces. Okay, so this is completing this particular chapter. If you have any question, please feel free to ask. Hello everyone. I'm going to give you offer related to CCI lab. In this lab, what you will find, so let me quickly show you that. In this lab, you have multiples switches. You can see you have more than 16 switches, 20 routers. You have a Steven full-fledged lab. Actually, this is complete uh, CCI enterprise 
1.0 lab where you can do section 1, section 2, section 3. Maybe you know that in CSA exam, you have three different sections. Means already sections are defined, but generally these three sections that students are practicing. And in this three sections, you can perform everything, all the tasks you can perform in this particular Eve NG lab. You can see the version and the supported images. This is exact match that we have in the exam as well. So for example, for SDVAN, you need to work on VAGES and the uh, vManage. Release is 18.4. That's the same release we have in the exam as well. So this will be your very much uh, similar lab setup that you have in your CCI exam for your practice purpose. Now, what you can't do in this lab? You can't do lab related to DNA because in this EVNG lab, we don't have Cisco DNAC integration and you can't do uh, ICE lab as well because in this, we don't have ICE integration as well. For that practice, you need full-fledged online rake from any good place you can go and have it. But apart from that, apart from 2.1, 2.2, actually, you can go and perform all the tasks. Even if you are not practicing for your CCI exam, for example, you are practicing for your CCNP and you want to check your OSPF knowledge, BGP knowledge, MPLS knowledge, uh, SDVAN knowledge, all those tasks you can go and perform in this lab. With this lab, I'm providing the video guide how to do all those tasks. Even we have the lab guide as well. So you can simply follow those guide. You can simply go and complete all those tasks. Suppose if you are new to the technology, so I have multiple free videos in YouTube and Udemy that you can go and refer to upskill your knowledge to learn the technology and then simply you can go and use this particular lab and you can break any CCNP CCI exam means you, you will pass it um, uh, easily. Now what is the cost and these are the sections that we have in the CCI exam. So what is the cost of this because I'm offering this for the student. So I put very little, a small cost here. So you have to pay only 150 USD to get this particular software and uh, how you can go and get it. You have to email me. So my email address, you can send me one email request. Let me write here, Ratnesh721, Kumar, 721 at the rate gmail.com. Just email me and uh, send me the request and I will give you this particular nice software, full-fledged software, EVNG software or the file where you can go and practice your CCNA, CCNP, CCI, SD1, full-fledged SD1 is there. So if you can go and watch my YouTube videos, in YouTube I have 22 hours SD-WAN uh, video recording file and so many SD-WAN videos I have uploaded in YouTube. Those YouTube videos also you need some lab setup, right, to practice. So even if you're not preparing for your CCNP or CCI, simply you want to learn uh, Cisco SD-WAN, you can go watch my free videos in YouTube, use this particular lab setup and you can perform your SD-WAN. You can become master in the SD-WAN. Likewise, if you are preparing for CCNP, and CCNP, again, we know that we have N core and one elective. For that also, you can go and perform all the tasks related to routing and switching, OSP, BGP, everything in this lab. It's a full-fledged lab. So I will recommend you to send this email right away. Take this particular lab, practice, enhance your skill, and become very good in the market so you will get high paid salaries. All right, after that you go and watch the technology video. Thanks for watching.